9-0. Let's see if he can do it. It looks like he's turned around. He's not going to go for it. Um, the crowd is building on the beach, though, and the wind is definitely picking up. Wind is getting stronger, but the waves are not getting bigger at the moment. This is the sort of day where it would be very, very fun for a little bit of free riding out there. But probably, I imagine, these riders are getting quite frustrated in their heats, just not getting the wave size that they really want to make the most of this 20 minutes on the water. But here we go, Roberti coming in for another attempt at upping his double wave score. And you see switching his stance to his backhand attack as he commits to this wave, adjusting his back foot so he's got that turn ability, time that bottom turn, smacking the lip, and then that difficult re-entry with the offshore wind. As you can see, like look how that wave changes on the on the down the line section. It can it can go from a mellow five turn wave to a one hit and then racy down the line closeout section. So it really just is sort of a roll of the dice depending on which wave you choose out of the set. Okay, coming up to almost a minute left of this heat. Clement is looking like he's in a very strong position at the moment. Um, he's got a two-wave score of 8.90. Looks like there might be a set coming through on this drone shot, and Clem's in the right position to be taking advantage of it, unless that set out the back is even bigger. But it's a little deceptive, actually, on the drone to, uh, to know exactly how these waves are going to hit the reef. But there's definitely a little bit of motion in the ocean. That's for sure. Here we go. It looks like Clem's going to commit to this one. What's he got for us? Big foam climb on his first hit on the upper end of the reef. Oh, it gets knocked off as he tries to float that section. So important to be able to make that first section to get onto the racy offshore section of the wave down the line. And uh, Roberti just picking probably the biggest set of the day so far as it comes in. It's coming a little further down the reef. Um, Clem's obviously just made a little inside snap turn just to make the most of it. But there we go. That is the end of the heat. So anything that happens now is not going to count, unfortunately. Just as that set rolls in, that's how competition goes. If the waves don't come in the timer, the chalk does not go on the board. But that is heat two of round two over. We've got two minute break. And then we are into heat three of round two. This is the knockout heat. So Clement Rosero has gone through. Roberti Bados has been knocked out. Unfortunately, probably due to an injury sustained earlier this week, surfing some of the biggest waves um, that we've had. Um, obviously didn't make things easy for him. And I imagine that it was a difficult call out there having such small waves rolling through.
All right, so we're back, and it looks like we have out there in the water Matu Lopez, Nikola Abadjiev, Tom, and we do apologize, but unfortunately, we have had huge internet issues, but it looks like it is resolved now. Time about 14 minutes to go, and I can start to hear the beach vibing. It wouldn't be paradise, Joe, if there was perfect 5G, that's for sure. There's always technical issues in the, the hardest places to reach when it comes to internet, but there isn't technical issues on the water right now. It's looking like this, the waves are back in. This heat's looking like it's heating up nicely. Machi Lopez on the water looking to actually put some chalk on the board now, but he hasn't got it easy because that was a nice wave. Yeah, Nicola, he's, like I said, he's one of my underdogs. He really has a laid back and powerful style. And now he is up against one of the best. There we have Nicola. That is the replay of one of those last waves. As we continue on here, first day of competition, Cape Verde. And we are already at it so far. First upset was Matthew knocking in a score in that first heat. And now he's up against that man flying through the sky. That was a lovely first wave for Nicola. But I think Matthew pretty much... Machu pretty much answered back straight away. Look at this, his backhand attack that he is known for and uh, this is trademark, trademark moves just coming out of the box straight away with some uh, with some high scores, 4.7. 4 yeah, 4.7 for Machu. Then we got a 4.33 and a 2.0 for Nicola. So already Nicola in the lead. Similar scores, Machu just a little bit more style, I'd say. Early days, though, even more than halfway through to go. We are currently in round number two, heat number three. And this is do or die situation. Whoever wins continues on. Whoever doesn't has a one-way ticket home. Yeah. Yeah, this would be a real shame to lose this heat for whoever ends up in the second spot. But when it comes to style, I don't think you can match match you. I agree. It's almost I do agree. It's almost impossible to 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 name anyone that has the same style as match you. I mean, I know style is largely subjective, but it's hard to say, you know, he can make any wave look good. I think, if, assuming he rides the wave. Yeah, Mr. Tropical is the Machado of our sport, on and off the water. And yeah, good to see him. Looks like he's, you know, starting to get into the groove as we are right now continuing on. I'm going to say it, waves do look like they've dropped, but sets are far and few between. When they do roll in, they do have about, you know, shoulders a head high at the moment. It does say tomorrow the forecast is going to get bigger and the next days is going to get even bigger. Saturday and Sunday are the two days to keep an eye out on our Cape Verdean events. So make sure to tune in live. And it is great to be here with you guys throwing the action at your television screens. What amazes me about this place actually is that there isn't really that much of a forecast for today and yet it's still solid. Solid. Like any other day you would, uh, anywhere in the world, this would be a banging day. It would be. Here we go. Nicola already two nicely timed turns. Let's see. Can he get past that section? This is where they got a pump. He does. Ooh. Big open laid back hack dragging the hand as he makes his way down the beach. Decent ride there for Nicola. And Machu also dropping in. Answering back. Boom. Bam. I mean, I was going to say Machu's really got to start putting his foot on the gas because... Uh, Nicholas stepped it up straight away here. He's putting the pressure on. And this is pressure round now. It certainly is. So, waiting for those scores. I'm going to be interested to see the score that last way from Nicola. Probably, you know, three decent hacks, maybe mid fours to fives. That four, will improve. 4.8. Looks like it's dropping in it. All right. So, that will improve on his backup score. We're waiting for other judges to drop their scores. And here we can see that replay of that last wave from Machu. Machu, that backhand hit. You see how he uses his upper body just to really drive those turns? I think like when you're really breaking down a rider's technique, it's super important to look at how they use all elements of their body. You know, it's not just about the legs, the hips. It's all about the shoulders, the upper body, the arms, and also like when you're riding a wave with a kite, 
you've got the bar to, de to be dealing with. So, you, you know, you are switching hands on the bar and there's a lot of technical aspects that you may not notice if it's the first time you're watching a kitesurfing event. But um, the judges are definitely taking all of these into consideration. Okay, so Nick, Nicholas last wave was a f came in at a 4.63 combined total and we are looking at Matthew's second wave coming in at a 5.8. So hard to deny, he's def Matthew's definitely scoring higher on average. Yeah, 10.50. Let's not forget Ayrton, 15 point average on that round. Number one, we saw Me Too and Pedro and Sebastian in between the 12s and the 13. So, Machu definitely in contentions, want to try and you know improve on that backup score. Not, Eight and a half minutes to go. It looks like he's signaling into the beach. He's not happy out there. Something, mm. Something's not quite right. Difficult to know. Could just be, could just be the fact that there's no waves. So both of them now out the back, trying to circle and see. Both very laid back styles, both of these athletes, Duotone athlete Matthew Lopez and the RRD athlete Nikola Abdab GF. They're good friends on and off the water, but like you say, Matthew was signaling in, in to the shore. I wonder what he was asking. Yeah, it's difficult to know. Maybe he wanted to change his kite, maybe change a board. I mean, it looks like it's working for him so far. He's definitely definitely upped his game from his last heat. He's obviously gone out there with a lot more energy to actually take some waves. And just looking out the window to our left, I can see some sets rolling in. So I think, I think we're about to see something good here. Here we go. Nicola dropping into the first wave of the set. Machu out the back. Nice little oh. float, but section gets the better of him. With Machu coming in on one of the bigger bigger waves of the afternoon here. Backhand hit, sees the wave stretching out down the line. Get that bottom turn nice and nice. Oh, oh. nice there from Machu. That's the style that the judges are going to be uh, rewarding. Boom! And it's all about that timing, you know. Bottom, that bottom turn. I would say the bottom turn is almost more important than the top turn. Absolutely. No, I completely agree with you. Be able to link those two ones together. That is definitely what we are looking for. And match you put in on one solid performance. Here we can see that wave was opening up very nicely for Nicola, but just got caught up here on the inside. That was a shame. It's a shame. I think it was like that's going back to those sort of split second decisions that I was talking about when you watch somebody like Ayrton ride, because sections present themselves, and it could be a floater, could be an air, could be a turn, could just be a speed management option. But you've really got to judge it right and make sure that you uh, that you make the right decision. Otherwise, it's it's game over. It's end of way for you. All right, well, coming up on five minutes, there we can see that's the bottom section. So that's where our athletes actually get into the water right down past the rocks. And then they go up from there all the way up onto the point over there. You can see Santa Maria and a nice little town over here as well. Where there's good vibes day and night. And then all the way over here, you can see where our athletes start to have their kites pumped up. And as we move a little bit further up, you can start to see the rocks of Punta Preta. First event of the season for the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. And there, the Judge Tower. And this is where the view starts to get interesting as we hit the water. And there, the right-hander of Punta Preta. And we can see both of the athletes making their way out. Match you a little bit further on the inside. Nicola, the further one out. Those are the two boys seeing who will stay alive in this competition so far 6.87 those are the kind of the scores that we're looking for yeah it's just you can see how he's getting those scores even with those single moves you know he's just timing them perfectly dialing in that bottom turn and just making sure that 
That top turn is perfect with an easy re-entry, kite control perfect. You can see them both hustling for priority out there um, just to make the most of the conditions that they have. But I think, you know, judges, look, look, he's going to get around that boy just about. Oh, but he falls off! There's some drama there. He's got his leash wrapped around the boy. Oh, that's what I caught casting it close. That is, uh, I'm not sure how that one's going to go, but it looks like Nicola's snuck in front of him <laughs> for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, Nicola needed that priority because as we're under four minutes to go, he wants to be able to have priority on that next set for sure. But that was a real, look, here we go, a replay. Look, he was trying to, get, Machu was really trying to get around those boys. And that's what we were talking about earlier from when the judges came in and explained the priority rule. You've got to go around that boy when it's man on man, two man heats. You've got to get around that boy in order to take that next wave. All right, so there we can see Nicola signaling in to see if he's in first or second. He knows he's in second now. There it is. There's the Shaka, and he's going to be going back out. Looking out of the corner of our booth here, Tom, it doesn't look like there's any waves coming our way. Will we see another set in three minutes? It's going to be close. It's going to be close, but Mathieu is sitting reasonably comfortably in the lead. Um, I'm guessing Nicola would need something like a seven-point ride to uh, to clench the win here, which with these wave conditions currently would be a very impressive feat in the next three minutes. How long have we got, Joe, until the tide turns? They say half past four, so about an hour and a half until we have that low, low tide. And you can see the waves a little bit closer in. Then it's going to be going out on the push as well. So we're in heat number three of this round number two. And now we are going to be able to see who is going to continue on in the competition tomorrow because round number three is released. So this is going to be the final heat of the men. Then we're going to have the girls come out and play. Okay, so we've got how many more heats in this round? All right, so let's have a little look see here. So we have, this is going to be eight more heats. So we round number three. So we've got five more heats to go. Mitu Montedo is going to be going up against Max Maxwell. Gray Foster up against Luis Brito. Gio Silva, Yaris Delormo. Titi Lopez, Wood Lee Hall. And Jordi Sansa and Arsenio Diaz. So all of those, only one will be able to survive. Okay, coming up to a minute left. A minute left in this heat with Machu with priority on the next set wave if he chooses to take it. But it looks like Nicola is going to go for a little insider if he chooses to drop in. No, it's not going to go. Definitely needs a sizable score in order to take over Machu right now. Is there going to be another wave? in the next 30 seconds. It doesn't look like there's anything out the back there, so Machu looks like he's gonna be moving over as he is gonna be out here, meaning he will be going up against Charlie Martin in the next heat. 10 more seconds to go, but wait, as Nicola is gonna be dropping in on this one, he would need Something above an 8.0 if he wants to have a possibility of taking out Machu. There's the buzzer. This wave will count, but that does not have that 8.0 scoring potential. So unfortunately for Nicola, that is not going to be enough. Machu Lopez is going to be moving through to the next round. Let's get to our highlights of that last heat.
Welcome back, everybody. So coming up next, Clement Rosseo up against Roberti Barros, two very talented surfers. Clement, he is a waterman himself, a big wave surfer, wing foiler, kite surfer, you name it, this guy does it. And then Roberti Barros also out there with the shades and the hair. So let's see who is going to be going out there as we are waiting on. All right, so we do apologize about that. Me Too Montedo, Matt Maxwell is what is going down out here on the water, Tom. We're getting there. We will get there. for round two knockout heat. Things are getting serious. And uh, this is this is Me Too's last, last chance to stay in the, con in the contest. It would be a shame to see him duck out, but I don't know. What do you think? I think he's got the advantage here over Max because of his local home spot, his legendary status. Max all the way from South Africa. He's got a good bit of uh, experience behind him, but I don't know, in these small waves. Yeah, he does. I mean, Me Too is a specialist. I mean, this is his backyard. He knows this place like none other. Out there together with his teammate, Matt Maxwell. And now just looking as they have 20 minutes of action, waiting to see his first set come through. Both of these guys, let's have a little look what kind of scores they did in that round number one. So, Mito Montedo, 12.33. Matt Maxwell, 5.73. So, definitely, Mito Montedo was the higher one of those two athletes. So yeah, by far me too, on paper, is the highest scoring athlete. And let's not forget, he's been a previous past champion also here in Cape Verde. He's won it a few years back and he was second last year against against Machu. So who <laughs> is it going to be? We will soon find out. Not to mention an island legend. I mean, it's, you can't actually walk past a building in this town without uh, seeing me too's face. Yeah, no, he is, he's been one of the godfathers of the sport and now out there, let's see what they can do. It looks like we have some motion in the ocean out the back and we will soon find out who is going to be continuing on in the competition. And knockout rounds is where it really starts to get interesting. I mean, in most competitions you have a sort of uh, warm-up heat round that just gets all the riders sort of ready to go warmed up on their gear and then uh, the second round is the round where business starts to get real and riders start to get sent home and uh yeah like you say like i said earlier it's very uh it's heartbreaking if you've flown all the way out here like max would have done from cape town and you're going up against one of the island's biggest legends and uh you know that there's uh, a chance that you might end up going home. Alright, so starting off and opening up, Matt, all the way down. A couple good turns already. This wave is opening up very nicely. Past that section, can he continue on? Yeah, it does look like he can. Just missing out there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And all the way down the line. Me too, big power hack. There we go. Me too locking into his flow by the looks of it. And some waves starting to deliver on the reef as well. You see these big sections coming through. It's about getting round those and it back into the turn section towards the end. Um, I guess when the wave starts to get a little bigger on this reef, it starts to become a bit more consistent the way it peels down the reef, but when the waves are small you get these big sections that sort of close down on you and you have to use a bit of your sort of knowledge of the wave and then a bit of knowledge of your kite to get around them properly so that you can get into that next turn. 
I would say there were two quite good scoring waves from both of them there. Yeah, no, looking good. We're still waiting. Let's have a little look-see at the scores as they come in. I reckon Me Too had a better top section, but then Matt did have the bottom was a little bit bigger. We will soon find out. Yeah, similar scores. So a 5.63 and a 4.77. So shy of a point in between the two, but nice openers for both of the F1 riders. Yeah, it's a good start for both of them. No sign of a combo. Um, me, me Too obviously going to be the favourite. Definitely the crowd favourite. Lots of supporters on the beach here, cheering him on. And uh, Max, just, uh, sorry, Matt, just a good guy. <laughs> it's the double N, the m &Ms. It's the m &M. That's what we're going to be calling him. Matt Maxwell. Ma Matt Maxwell. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> great guy from South Africa. And he is cruising and perusing. Nice score, though, 4.77 as we are continuing and getting on in the rhythm. It looks like all of the hiccups are finally getting out. Unfortunately, that internet connection looking nice and stable. Amen. And now there is the view, Tom. That is Punta Preta, Cape Verde. You can see the people right along the reef. And they are going to start to make some noise as one of their local legends, as you said before, Mito Montedo is on the water. And any time he's out there, there's always cheers in the crowd. He goes in priority right now as well, which means he can take wave of his choice. Which wave of the set will he take? It's funny from the drone, it looks like there's always a set going on, but um, it's tricky. When, when it starts to reform on the reef, um, it's difficult to tell exactly how it's going to reform. Some of them go wide, some of them fatten up down the line, some of them don't even break in the, in the, on the top section of the reef at all. So it um, really is a game of knowledge and wave selection, I think, at this point. And as we've said before, energy. Lots of energy from the rider. Yeah, and out there at the moment, we can see Mito Montedo. He is out on a 10-meter F1 kite. He's out there, if I'm not mistaken, on their wave edition. And he is also on a 5.6 board, was the one I saw him down there on the beach. And then Matt on a little bit of a longer board. He is a bigger rider, a lot taller than me too. And we were saying before that you know, some of the athletes go out on the shorter ones to get that little bit more skatey feel. And then some of the bigger riders take a bigger board to be able to kind of roll their way down the line. But still, looks like we've got a set coming our way. And let's see what is going to be made of that because it is looking like it's opening all the way down the yeah, reef there top. Yeah, that's the, that's the top of the reef there. That's what the riders hope to see, the way it bowls into the top of that reef. So you can get that first turn, nice critical turn as that sort of side shore wind hits in. And then as you start to come down the reef, the wind starts to bend a bit more offshore. So you can race the section and then uh, hopefully the wave will keep keep going. But it looks like uh, called cool it, cool it a day on that one. Yeah, there we can see Me Too just making a couple of turns on that one, but getting and kind of ejecting himself. Nice, big, first, powerful hat down the line. This is what, one of the things I really like about Me Too. As you can see, he stays at the top of the wave, reads it, and makes himself just push him all the way down. So a 5.17, so a 10.80 total for Montedo. So comfortably in the lead so far. Let's see how he continues on as we're just coming on to a minute number 11. 20 minute heat, top two scores out of 10, top two waves out of 10s are the ones that are going to give you the kudos and the laugh from our judges. It's interesting what you say about the different um, you know, size of each rider you know, and different styles and sizes and weights of riders really do come in because like we were talking about James Carew earlier, he's one of the few riders that have managed to beat Ayrton and, and some of the lighter, more agile riders through having a super powerful style. You know? Yes. Like being a big rider, being able to put power through the turns. And uh, we can see here, Matt just using some of that power to, to go down the line on that wave. But power and size really only come into play when the waves start to get bigger. Yeah, no, it's definitely on the smaller waves, you know, maybe, I'm not going to say it's an advantage, but being, you know, being a, let's say a little shorter, a little lighter, you can kind of get yourself into better positions, you know, you can see it in surfing, you know, the likes of the Toledos, the, the Medinas, uh, you know, Slaters, they're quite 
shorter athletes. You go to like a Geordie Smith or someone who's, you know, 6'4 plus, really can see, bring, starts to bring out that big, powerful, not slower, but more arced out style, which we saw from James. Yeah. But yeah, now at the moment, it is a battle for the tens because 10.80 Mitsu Montero. And Matt, he is not putting off at all. A 5.37 for that last wave. 10.14, shy of a seventh of a point in between the two of these two boys. Nine minutes to go. At the moment, there's a battle. Nine minutes to go. Me too with priority. It's very close. Very close. Could easily see another set in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah, sets are taking about five minutes in between, five to seven minutes, probably about three to four waves into the set. You know what they say, always go for that third wave, because if you fall off on the, if you nosedive on that front one, you're going to get with them on the head if you're not careful. And it looks like Me Too. Is that, is that, he's... No, decided against it. it. Looks like he was having a little look-see. Yeah, decided against it, interesting. And he's gone for the one behind, so Me Too obviously... Definitely looking for something out there, but so far not being able to find any of the waves. Even scores, Me Too slightly ahead. Eight and a half minutes to go. Round number two of the competition, the first day here. There's probably about, what would you say, 15 to 18 knots out there. So athletes are out there on 10 meter kites, maybe even a little bit more. And then what you can see is, you know, some of the athletes, especially Me Too, he really likes to go out on smaller equipment. I don't think I've seen Me Too on anything bigger than a 10-meter kite. He is a specialist when it comes to riding this location in light winds because he just wants to have maximum control on the wave. Yeah, I was going to say, 10, a 10-meter 10 kite is actually a big kite for, Absolutely. for a lot of the local guys here. Because that's because once you get on the wave when it's side offshore, you then start to really build that pressure because the wave's pushing you in and the wind's pushing you out. So you start to build that sort of uh, pressure between you and the kite. And if you've over, oversized your kite, it can have a real impact on the way where you ride, ride the wave, you know. Yeah, and you can, you know, when you make that top turn, you just get pulled off the back. So it's finding that sweet medium as most things in life. That said, if you don't go on a kite big enough, you won't even stay out wind. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> which, it just happened to me the last time I went out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, this is not an easy location to ride, that's for sure. You need to, well, I mean, sometimes you can see also the Cape Verdeans, they actually come on into the shore right next to the rocks and they use the white water to push themselves against to make it upwind. So, yeah, yeah. not so bad so far. All right, Me Too starting Ooh. off with an open face, big hack, looping the kite down there, Tom. Yeah, you see the top of the reef, the way he managed to really hook that turn back, mm. back up, went almost like a roundhouse type turn, and that's because the wind at the top of that reef is slightly more sideshore, and it allows you to really wrap that turn back up into the pocket, as when you get down the line, it becomes a lot harder to do that. See how he ends yeah, up? Yeah, pushes against his fins exactly. there. Exactly. And here we can see this on this second turn. Boom, straight off, looking to engage with that fur, but the wave closing out on him there. Two turn combo is enough. Yeah, he's looking, that. looking like some good scores. I can see some of the judges here just waiting for a number to drop. Will it improve on his backup score? We will soon find out. Two turns, gonna be hard. Gonna be hard for sure, but it's not looking good for Max. T Matt. <laughs> Sorry, Matt Maxwell. Keep getting that wrong there, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll forgive me, especially if he nails his next wave. <laughs> yeah, having a little look-see, so it looks like, yeah, obviously Matt's got priorities. He's around that boy, and me too got that first wave. 
And yeah, just that under five minutes on the old ticker, on the old buzzer to go off. And we will be moving on because coming up next, we are going to be having out there on the water is going to be Gray Foster Luis Brito. So a local against the American. Those are the two riders that are going to be coming up next. The highest score above 15 points with an 8.0-point-plus 8 8 score, Ayrton Cosolino. After that, there's a bit of a mix in between the Sebastian Ribeiros, Pedro Matos, and that also um, we could see there with Me Too Montano in between the 12, medium 12s to 13s. Those are kind of where those top scores are at. The 7s and the 8s are the name of the game. But obviously conditions are a little bit on the smaller side. Still, there's been, considering there's not a lot of forecasts, I can't wait to see when that forecast hits, Tom. Yeah, I'm really excited about it, I have to say. To see this break going off on a big forecast is something really special it's uh it's one of those seven wonders of the kite surfing world mm. and um yeah to see some of the best riders riding it as well as inspirational oh me too nice little wall climb there letting that finlo love how he pushes up against and just crouches down too oh a little bit of an ollie off of that one starting to get loosey-goosey as mr angulo would say <laughs> I think he's got a good chance there of improving one of his backup scores. I mean, talking of flow, that's what that's what the local riders have here. Look at this, bang, and straight into the upper body, bottom turn. There's not even a check speed turn in there. He's going from one turn to the next without even thinking about it. It's just natural to him. Yeah, I love how that you know how he gets into that position, kind of like stretches it out, and there's that half second kind of break where everything freezes, and then he's back into it again, and then another break. It's it just looks so stylish. Me too, Montero. I reckon definitely going to be improving on one of those scores. We'll soon find out which one, and he is definitely going to be continuing on the leads. 11.06, so a 563 out on that one improving with a 5-4-3 backup score so great riding there from the Cape Verdean. Yeah that's really nice I mean I, it's clear that the judges are looking for flow they're looking for smooth transitions in the turn I think you know as with any wave riding you don't want to see the rider checking themselves between their moves you want to almost see them anticipating the wave ahead of time and like i was saying about Ayrton he's thinking three turns ahead to me it looks like he's already considering what's yeah, happening absolutely a long time in advance much like a game of chess except everything's changing all the time you know yeah no there's so many variables out there but you, it's those athletes like you see it in the kind of trial runners or downhill runners as well the downhill bikers they they are literally looking four to five meters ahead of them and knowing which you know kind of which stone to jump off of while they're going down you can see that here with the wave me too is he going to be going for it it doesn't look like he is but there seems to be some wave coming out and it looks like me too is taking off a little bit further down the left hand side note deciding against it me too with the orange matt with the black kite one as minute we're approaching that one minute yeah hustling that's looking like a nice wave here for Matt, as I can see it out the corner of our booth as well. And the one behind looking like it's opening for me too. So double do or die. This is the moment for Matt. Final chance for him to stay alive in this contest. All right. Closes out a little bit in front of him. Does he get behind it? He does. Yeah. So that is not what he was looking for as we're coming up on the last 40 seconds. No, he's not going to do it for Matt Maxwell from South Africa. Nice guy, had a chance to catch up with him on the beach over the last couple of days. He's obviously been enjoying himself here um, from some of the conditions we've had the last few days. Um, spent a bit of time on the water, but hasn't managed to uh, pull it through unless you can pull the rabbit out of the hat in the next 14 seconds. But. Oh, 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 and look at the wave out the back there for me <laughs> too. All right, Matt's going to turn around as you know his only chance is to get on this wave. So if I'm not mistaken, they were both on the swell. So I reckon both of these waves are going to count. Even if they don't, we're just going to enjoy the view. Matt Maxwell in the front, me too, Montedo in the back. Oh, there we go. That's what he was looking for. 
still slightly small on the reef, bit of an open runner, not developing like he wanted it to, but he's got a little air move. Ah. Does he land it? No, he doesn't. That's a shame. And then you can see Me Too at the back. So, yep, it is going to be official. Me Too Montedo is going to be making it through, and Matt Maxwell is unfortunately not going to be able to continue on. What a heat. Let's have a look at the highlights. Welcome back, everybody, as we continue on round number two, heat number five, Gray Foster and Luis Burrito. Gray out of the United States of America, Luis Burrito, one of the all-time, the Chupa Chups, as we used to call him, because he had those raster hair, and he is one of the locals down here from Cape Verde. Powerful rider, one of the bigger boys out here on tour, as we are going to be starting off, and see, there it is, Luis Burrito dropping in. One of the better waves we've seen as well this afternoon. Looking like things are turning up. A few sets on the horizon. Oh, he's also on a smaller board as well. He, he likes riding that whip and he's really good with it. Just snapping off the top. Does a lot of damage on this wave, that guy. I've ridden with him before and he uh, he's on every possible wave out there. A uh, powerful rider, you can see dropping in nicely. This is where the locals, you can really tell they know where they're at. They just drop in on that right section, and here we go, continuing on. All right, making our way back out. So waiting for those numbers to drop here for Luis Brito. 
as we have our top two out. Brito going to be around the freeze and just waiting for a couple more scores from our judges. We've got Gray Foster with priority looking for the next set wave to come through. It's not been the most prolific set delivery out there today. There's always a hope that there's another big set on the way, but it's been slow. And like I say, 20 minutes seems like a long time, but when you're on the water and you're hunting for a wave, 20 minutes flies by very quickly. Uh, that's why it's important, I think, to just make sure you're getting those small wave scores in the meantime. Otherwise, you could end up with nothing, nothing on the board, which we've seen a couple of times today so far. Yeah, Gray, quite a powerful rider himself. He did really well down there in Dakla as one of the final events of the season last year. He really was pushing hard. He likes these kind of you know, little slabby onshore kind of one-hit wonders. Has a, has a really good run down there. Let's see how he does here on the more cross-offshore conditions. Good to see an American rider on the tour as well. You know, There's lots of... Uh Lots of different nationalities on the tour this year, as we saw last night, the opening ceremony. It's great to see a big representation. I mean, notably for me, there's no English people anymore on the... On oh, the you're here, mate. Yeah, well, yeah. Representing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Representing. Somebody has to be here to be representing, <laughs> you know. But it's, uh, no, it's great just to see so many different people from so many countries, so many places, all getting involved. And uh, like I say, for, for wave kiting, it's becoming more hmm. and more like personal to me as well you know having done so many different disciplines in side kite surfing i think there's something really special about kite surfing in waves and and having that sort of soulful connection to the elements that that this side of the sport has no definitely and you know to be able to enjoy just you know a nice ride all the way down and you know like you said one of the seven wonders of the kite surfing world that is punta preta and also I think one of the things about athletes competing out there, you know, we saw, you know, last week it was the Pike Masters. There was an interview with uh, John John Florence. He said one of the things he loves the most about Pike Line is he can have it to himself and a mate. Because yeah. he is in the water and there's only two people out at Pipe. And, you know, to only have two people out here in Punta Preta, I mean, it's worth just getting in the water for that. Yeah, that alone, exactly. I mean, on a day like today, if it wasn't a competition on, it would be carnage out there. There would be wings, kites. Uh, windsurfers, you, you know, there would be uh, a lot of people out there hoping to hustle to get themselves a, a ride and it's often like that at a lot of spots actually where, you know, you get those good days and you get those rare days where the spot, you know, the conditions come in um, that, that are quite rare and then everyone just piles on the water and it can get quite hectic out there. So, yeah, like you say, it's just such a rare and amazing thing to, to get some of the best conditions in the world at the best spots in the world with just you and your friend, albeit a competitor that you're hoping to, uh, to beat. And I think especially as the conditions start to get better over this week and this forecast starts to hit, that I think we're going to see from early tomorrow you're going to start to see the smiles getting even bigger. You're going to start to see the people and the riders getting more and more stoked as they come in and um, have experienced that 20 minutes of solo perfection on, uh, on one of the world's best kite surfing waves. Yeah, and especially, Tom, as the forecast for the weekend is looking insane. We've got about two and a half meters to three meter waves, and there's a calling 16 to 17 second period. So really, that could pump some serious size in Cape Verde here for Punta Preta. But at the moment, Brito, he already has a 3.0 on one of those waves, and slalom in, in between the rocks there. Yeah, you're not careful. You're going to lose your fins on something like that. Um, it really is shallow, especially when uh, the waves are this small. The smaller the wave is, the shallower it breaks. So if you have small waves, they're really breaking in very, very shallow water. So often, like a common misconception is, a bigger wave is sometimes more dangerous. But that said, when you're getting really small waves breaking on reef like this, you are very close to the rocks and in very shallow water. So um, actually often 
slightly bigger waves offer you a bit more space on the reef. Yeah, you have a, you've got to commit more, but you do have a little bit more chance to not be so close. I mean, obviously, you know, low tide is around half past four out there at the moment. So it's just quarter before over here local time. So getting pretty close to the lowest point that we can see on the inside there. Just look how that, you know, that inside section is bubbling. And those bubbles mean only one thing, a little, you know, brown little prickly rocks coming out through the saw break. Yeah, and I've, uh, I've swam at this spot and, uh, and filmed at this spot. And when you swim out there, you, you see the reef and you realize that you do not really want to be making contact with it. Um, there's all sorts of uh, fins and uh, bits of board and <laughs> bits of uh, lost equipment tangled in that reef um, from many years of people getting on the wrong side of it. Yeah, and also there's a few urchin. I've heard there's a few urchin nests Big as well, urchins. so you don't want to. Yeah. It's definitely a no-go zone if you can avoid it, but you know, if you you've got to risk it if you want the biscuit. And our boys and girls are definitely going to be going because, especially now, elimination round because this is round number two of the competition. I Meaning whoever loses is out of the comp. So far, we have Luis Brito at three and a two point six seven. And then Gray Foster, as we can see, just coming up on that 11-minute mark, 20-minute mark, three-minute transition. Top two waves are the ones that are going to count. This is what I find, this is what I'm going to find very interesting, actually, about the wing foiling um, at this spot. Because this is an incredibly technical and hard wave for wing foiling. And I've been watching the last couple of days. There's some very, very good riders here. Mm. But if you get on the wrong side of this wave, doesn't matter how good you are, Goodbye. Yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's going to be some destroyed equipment. There's oh, going to yeah. be some, you know, some rock time and some broken broken gear. Yeah, right? I know a lot of the athletes bring kind of a couple of the same size that they're pretty sure they're going to be using out here because obviously, you know, A, the rocks, depending on how close and how vertical or how critical they want to go, they're going to be very close and they can touch that with the foil. B, if they got on the wrong side of the wave, like you're saying yourself, they are going to get munched and closed in with the equipment onto the rock. So definitely on the wing foil inside, selection is going to be key. A nice ride there from the American Gray Foster. Yeah, he really worked that through to the inside. Look at this. He, he stuck with it and worked it right down to the beach. And I think that's going to... That's really going to pay off for him because that end section there was a sort of six turn combo right onto the sand. Yeah, making it work a little far down. Let's not forget our judges can do, are about four meters in the air. So we have a judge tower right in the middle here. So they'll be able to see that end section a little better than us. But looking like some scores. It's Coming close to the fives, I reckon, waiting for confirmation. That could give him the lead. It's going to be a good backup score for him for sure. He's already got 1.07 on the board. There we go. It's dropped to the 4.87. Putting him up there in the lead, but only by a narrow margin. And uh, look at this set coming in now. Yeah, all right, Brito. You can see, unfortunately, one of the only things about Prince of Predator when it gets this time in the afternoon, no matter what you do, the sun is right in front of you. So we have to have... Uh, you do like a nice little silhouette and the amount of spray Brito flying across that. Struggling to make it down the line there a little bit. All right, so here we can see also trying to make as much as they can because it is very close in between these guys. I mean, there's 0 0.03 of a point in between them. So 0 0.3, I do apologize. And we will have to see nine minutes. There's definitely enough time for another set to come through, but they have kind of been scavenging the inside rollers. Yeah, it looks like the inside's actually lighting up a little more uh, than the top of the reef right now. I guess that might be because of the lower tide as we come up to the bottom of the tide. Um, but I think the inside is uh, starting to work nicely. Okay, I just had a dodgy Portuguese cameraman come into the booth saying that he is in desperate need of some beers later. I think it's definitely getting 5 o'clock somewhere. I mean, it's pretty close to 5 o'clock right it, here. It, it, it is it's very close. close. Shh, don't tell anybody. I mean, hey, you know, <laughs> there might be no English people in the competition, but there are English people in the box. So. Always. There are defi <laughs> definitely, you know. This, I mean, come on. In the days when we used to compete, it was about the overall impression. It was the day and the night. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's m multi, there's many talents to an athlete, as we all know, you know. Multidisciplinary. Multidisciplinary, exactly. <laughs> Back in the days of the Triple S, it was oh. 
Fue judged in the evening, judged in the day. Oh. In fact, you were just judged. Yeah. So, <laughs> Fuerte into a carpa. Man, the <laughs> memories. Anyway, back to the action. Back so, to the action here. So with these. far, Gray in the lead. A little bit of a lull moment here. And we can see but he's waiting, waiting for what, some waves to come his way. Looks like Gray Foster just working that inside section has really paid off for him on those last two waves. Yeah, he had, I mean, that last one, he had probably had about four turns just on the bottom section. It was just bam, 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 bam. Nice to see. And, you know, he did very well in Dakla as well, making it happen. Let's see if he can put it off here in Cape Verde. I mean, you know, it is, he has a decent heat. He's in the lead, but um, obviously Brito being one of the locals can throw down a good score. It ain't over to the buzzer. Let's see who's going to be going through. I mean, that's another, talking of Dakla, it's another very difficult wave to say. Mm. I mean, uh, quite similar to this, similar to this, but really sort of gusty side mm. offshore, unpredictable wind and uh, very hard to stay in position on the break. So, you know, a lot of the game out there is is actually the skill of the rider just to be in the right place at the right time. And, uh, you, you know, as it changes to be able to adapt to those changes of the wave, definitely. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, it's really look at, looking like both of these athletes trying to find that position. Let's see if they can get another wave. Okay, as we come up to the last five minutes in this heat, Gray Foster from America holds the lead with an 8.27 combined score over um, Luis Brito, 5.93. It's not a huge gap between each other, but what can be done in the next five minutes? Looks like there's a set on the way, a few waves rolling through. Here we go, Brito. Sorry, Gray Foster with that. Because they're both on a wave right now. What can be done? Who is going to work this wave all the way to the inside and get that extra score? But I'm pretty sure all the points to be had right now are on the inside of the wave. As they disappear down towards the beach, it starts to open out. And they can get at least three or four turns down there. Oh, it's like Brito went for the air section, didn't make it. It's not going to help his cause, but you know he knew he needed it. Here we can see the replay. It wasn't much of a wave, but he is making the most of it. And as you can see, as we approach dead, dead low tide right now, there's basically rocks sticking out on every section of the wave. Um, so because the waves are coming through reasonably small, it's turning into a rock jo dodging competition and uh, reforming nicely through to the beach section on the inside. All right, so let's have a little look. See here, 10.04. Oh, Gray really starting to up the level here. I was with that 5.17, 4.87. Then Burrito 
Really needs to find a gem if he wants to have a chance. Uh, continuing on. Oh, nice. Top turn pretty much right against the rocks. He is really going for it here. Second good turn there from Brito. Can he make it all the way down? Trying to get a bit of shampoo, but losing his board. Just under three minutes. He's going to really have to get back out there if he wants to have a chance of not getting kicked out of this competition. You can see that sun is shining hard. Sun protection and sunscreen out there, ladies and gentlemen, because it is beautifully warm over here, about 25 degrees. We've got about 20 knots out here. Punta Preta, first day of the GK Kite Surf World Cup here in Cape Verde. And we can see all of the top athletes joining us here for this beautiful right-hander that is Punta Preta. So far, Ayrton Corzolino, your current world champion, has had the highest wave score and combination score of the day. Round number two of the men out there right now. And we are going to continue on, finish round number two. And then it will be time to go into the women as round number three of the men have released. And Gray, big hit. Can he get over? just unfortunately got pushed off the back and that's what we've been talking about if you have a little bit too much power and can't push in you will get pulled off the back exactly exactly yeah it's very easy to lose that top turn control it's very tempting to go high on the wave and really drive those fins high but if you get that kite wrong you're just going to get pulled off the back of the wave and as soon as you're off the back of the wave that is end of wave score for you so it's it looks like an easy wave to ride, but it just is not anywhere near as easy as it looks. I mean, it forms up perfectly, but it's so easy just to get pulled off the back of the wave with any slight mistake of the kite. Yeah, you really got to get that kite forward if you want to have a chance. Brito just scavenging, trying to get something to improve on his scores, but it is not looking good for him. Gray at the moment up the top, 30 seconds to go on the counter. He's comboed with 30 seconds to go. It's almost impossible for the local Luis Brito to come back from this. Um, what a shame. Yeah, he would definitely have to get something above. I mean, you're looking, he, Brito would pretty much have to pull off an eight if he wanted to be able to go. So he would have, yeah, he needs something in behind seven if he wants to have a chance here. Three two one and there it is there is the red flag in the sky that is it for this heat let's have a look at the highlights
Welcome back, everybody. As we continue on the next out in the water, we're going to have our good friend and event organizer, Joe Silva, who's going up against Yanis Del Onima. Joe is going to be out there on the F1 kite, front and center, that you can see him with the Rastas. And he is going up against the Italian duotone athlete, Yanis Del Onima. There you have Joe coming at you. Let's see if he's going to be starting off right on the buzzer. Yeah, it's wave selection. It's all about wave selection at the moment, Joe. Looks like uh, until we get to the bottom of this low tide, the, the wave consistency is just really not going to start delivering, which is a shame. But if you've got any questions on the event, make sure you check out the live stream. Get involved in the comments if you want to ask us any questions. Um, make sure you do. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get into this heat. Looks like at the moment there's a bit of a lull going on. So we've got 20 minutes for the next uh, delivery from the Atlantic Ocean to come through. The wind's picking up though, so there's no problem for the riders to stay out wind by the looks of it. But we do need the swell size to pick up. Joe De Silva, one of the event organizers, uh, I believe, and uh, very involved with this setup here on Punta Preta. Yeah, no, thanks to him and his wife, Giada, we can get this event down here and to all of our partners. A big thanks to Duotone and to F1 Kites for putting in the extra push to make this event happen this year. Such an important event for all of us, and it's looking like so far the conditions are already coming towards us there's some good waves and the forecast is looking even better how is the event scored a question coming through um yeah we've had briefing from the judges earlier in the stream about how the event scored the event the judges are looking for flow consistency power and down the line accuracy from the riders how they perform on their top turns how they re-enter the wave and how they use just the board without too much of the influence from the kite. I think that's one of the biggest things to recognize is in a, in a kite surfing event, you use the kite to get you to the wave, and then once you're on the wave, you wanna be riding that wave and using the power of your board to make the most of the wave. Yeah, and then we have a panel of five international judges who are going to give you the numbers that appear on your screen. How does that work? The top score and the bottom score gets cut, so that gets hacked. And then the three medium scores, these going to be average, and that's the numbers that our athletes you will see on your screen here on the live. So right now, 100% surfing is the criteria. Joe Silva is out there. We also have Janis Ted Olmo, your top two athletes. Either of them yet to get a wave, but it looks like there might be something on the horizon out there. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough when you're on the water. You've got 20 minutes to perform, and the ocean just isn't delivering. It's a very, very difficult situation and very frustrating for the riders that are out there because, like we said earlier, this is a knockout round, judged just like we said on flow, consistency, and how you ride the wave. But if there is no wave, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's one of those things, you know, it's the power of Mother Nature. Just have to wait for it to, de to, de to deliver. And, um, you know, like some of the best athletes of all time, um, they've been some of the luckiest athletes of all time, actually, because they get on the water and the waves are there, you know. Like it's not always about skill, it's sometimes about the ocean delivering to you you know absolutely and you know kind of being in touch and knowing you know we've seen you know some of the best surfers in the world wait to those final seconds of the heat feeling the ocean and then that wave being kind of sent to them you could almost say you really do know have to know how to read the signs at a location like this being in the right position really does help and there we can see on the bottom right hand corner Josh Silver looks like he's going to be dropping in here we go Big, powerful open hack there for him. He's got the speed off the top, and can he keep it together? Yes, he does. I don't know if he's gone he's through. Gone through I reckon he's rocks. gone through the rocks. He's lucky to have his fins left on his board there, but that was a nice take 
Here he goes, another wave hey. going on out the back. But look, this is the lowest tide so far today, and you can really see how critical that becomes. There is not much room on the inside to make a mistake. He is stuck on dry reef there, pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, you can see here, Joe, after that second turn, pretty much just plowing his way through. Look at the bubbles. You know that reef is opening up in here. After this section, boom, off the top. Look at those rocks. Nice lad. And boom, 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 boom. I mean, this is where he jumps off to make sure. Lucky to keep his fins. Lucky to keep his fins. Exactly. <laughs> but maybe you get points for ripping your fins out. A, Who knows? A for effort. A for effort. Exactly. Definitely give him A for effort. A for effort. Yeah, there's so much of this is about flow. Oh wow, that was a nice turn. But again, difficult re-entry and drops straight onto the dry rocks. But yeah, when when it's low tide here at this spot and the waves aren't that big, you are really pushed close to the shore. And uh, the waves are breaking in very shallow water, so it uh, becomes a lot more critical to get it right and to, uh, to not project too far in front of the wave, otherwise you end up on, well, on the beach. Yeah, no, I mean, that's you, you do have to make sure that you can get past that last section. I mean, we see some of the guys actually airing across a couple of the rocks and then going down, but here we, here we can say, and going, I never did, so we're looking for 4.20 for Josh Silver, 1.63 there for Jadis del Olmo. Few questions about how they keep their line when they're going so fast down the line. And uh, I think it's one of the biggest it's one of the biggest topics of, you know, one of the biggest advantages of kite surfing versus a lot of other sports when you're riding a wave is you can speed down the line. You can really um, you can really gap sections in the wave. You can use the kite if you need to to sort of get round sections um, and uh, yeah to make the most of the available waves. Yeah, but there definitely it is very far in between the sets right now. You can really see it's getting because half past four, so we're about 20 minutes away from that low tide. And then normally, what does happen? When there's a shift in the tide, there's kind of half an hour to 40 minutes when the ocean, I'm not going to say stops, but kind of goes on to a stall and kind of resets itself. And sometimes that can either mean to push up, but at the moment, it does look like the waves are really disappearing. Yeah, it does. And it's, uh, it's a tough call for these athletes because, you know, 20 minutes on the water, you've got 20 minutes to show yourself at your best and, uh, and beat the guy that you're against, especially in a knockout round. And if the ocean doesn't deliver, there's not much you can do. Yeah, and our race crew would definitely, you know, take that into account. They may want to make sure that conditions are fair and are good out there because it's an elimination round. Sometimes when it is an elimination round, when, you know, when it's necessary, you can push maybe a little extra bit because you know no matter what happens, people are going to be able to continue. It still has to be fair, but it can be a little bit more on that borderline section. But when it comes to people being kicked out and going home, it has to be as legit and as, and as fair as possible. Yeah, that's true. That I mean, but that that said, these two riders they're dealing with the same conditions. They're out there at the same time, um, and you know, with kite surfing, there's multiple things to consider. It's not just waves, but you've also got the wind, and you've got you know, you know, other 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 factors that decide how difficult it is to to be out there on the water. But both riders dealing with the same conditions. Um, sometimes it's just down to that shake of the dice, like I say. Yeah, it's equally as good or as equally as bad for anybody out there. Exactly. And uh, if Mother Nature's not on your side, it's quite quite easy for 20 minutes to go flat. Yeah, you got to definitely got to pay your respects. But here, at the moment, we're just coming up on that middle mark, the Ecuador, the halfway. And there we can see Josh Silva there on the F1 front and center. He, at the moment, has a 4.20, 3.77 and a 0.43. Janice and Lonomar, 2.40, 1.20, That's what I call consistent for the Italian out there. But now waiting to see. It looks like that wave might be forming joys. It's going very close to the top section of the reef. I mean, to be in the lead with two sets of matching scores at 1.20 is, is a sign of the heat. But here we go. There's another another wave come in this looks more convincing all right Yaris backside this is looking nice opening across the 
Open oh. across the reef here. Big turn for him. Back gets caught up on the top. Again, that re-entry. So that side offshore wind making it very, very difficult for um, these riders to get back into the wave again. But he did get one convincing turn straight off the bat. And another question out here on the stream. Worst case scenario, if their waves were non-existent, will they be able to redo their heat later in the day? If the wave, if the conditions stop, so to speak, and the race director sees that the conditions are not there and it's not suitable to continue running the heat, two things can happen. The heat is cancelled and is completely redone, or depending on if the heat has already advanced and they've had scoring ways in potential ways, the heat might be redone from a certain amount of ways with a different time scheme. Those are the kind of two scenarios that would happen at the moment. Obviously, conditions are a little small, but conditions are still there, so game on. Yeah, and the wind is consistent, and uh, you know, although the ocean is is never the same, it's always changing. So it's very difficult to make sure that the conditions are going to be the same for everybody. But at the same time, yeah, it is one of the hardest jobs to be a race director in those situations where you have to make difficult calls sometimes, especially when it comes to people travelling all this way and uh, and having their chances proverbially dashed on the rocks. <laughs> that is for sure. And with a little extra urchin sauce to go with it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, we've been talking about the tide all day so far. I would predict that in half an hour, when the tide drops to its full low, we're going to start to see some change. And sometimes it's remarkable how quickly you can see the change, you know. <laughs> Especially here in these islands in the middle of the Atlantic, you're of a... Uh, You've got a lot of water moving, even whether you realize it or not. But look, we've still got waves going on. Scoring waves happening right here. Yeah, there you can see. So, you know, to get a general, the top two scores that you can see out there on the screen are the two best waves that they have. For example, Gray, we can see some, you know, Yanis Alonimo, he has had a couple of 1.2s and a 0.33. When it came to Josh Silver, he has only had two surf waves so far, so he doesn't have any more scores. What you see on the scoreboard there is the top two waves. They have 10 waves that they can take off on and engage, and they only the top two scores are the ones that you will see on your screen right there coming up on seven minutes to go 13 minutes already have been gone for these athletes 20 minute hits let's see who's going to be continuing on in the competition so far joe silver yeah that last wave really changed it for joe silver two very convincing turns um in very shallow water but you know critical critical turns and well well played i think is the is the best way to describe it, I mean, when, when the conditions are difficult like this, when it's small, it just really stands to highlight who's the most rounded rider. Like we're talk we've been talking about, you know, bigger riders, smaller riders, riders with energy, riders with the tactics. In the end, every rider has to deal with the same conditions out there. Yep. Every rider has advantages or disadvantages. You can't all be good in big waves. You can't all be good in small waves. It's going to come down to a little bit of luck of the draw. But ultimately, the most rounded rider is probably the one that's going to win. Yeah, and, it, and especially if you know when it comes to a world championship, if you want to be world champ, you need to know how to throw down the good, the bad, the medium, and the excellent. You got to you got to know how to do it. Offshore, onshore, mushy, clean, barreling, slab, you name it. World champion means you are the best in the world at that sport in all of the conditions. And you know sometimes, especially some of the younger athletes coming on to tour, they wonder why. The old dogs still make their way through, and it's because they have the skill set in so many different locations, so many different ways that you are—they are, are going to beat you on the overall and in specific locations. This is why to be a complete rider, you know, when it comes to the GK, one of the—I think one of the founding things of the GK is makes riders more complete. We've had strapless freestyle riders, the likes of Camille Delanois or Kiket or some of the you know, top, top strapless freestyle riders that when they started this sport, they couldn't even surf a wave. And now they can, they go in the waves and they kill it so they become a more complete rider or vice versa. Guys like you know, Pedro Matos who hated strapless freestyle, absolutely hated it. James Carew, but then when, okay, if I want to be a world champion, I have to learn to do this. 
they are you know natural athletes themselves they get into it they're some of the best and this is why they've been world champions so i think it's very cool you know we've seen it on the you know let's say on the kite boarding so twin tip side yeah you know the you know there's people that are good at freestyle good at big air good at you know racing you name it if you can be that complete ride because in the end what we want to do out there is to be able to go out and have fun no matter what be it a four or wing four or windsurfer you know twin tip big air you name it as long as there's a cold beer at the end of the day we're all happy exactly and it's all fun on the water until you lose <laughs> no but seriously it's not only good for the sport but also good <laughs> Small interruption there for refreshment, um, but yeah, it's not only good for the athletes. I think in that, you know, with the attitude you're talking about, you know, about being a rounded athlete, about making people sort of push themselves in different conditions to they used to. It's also good for the sport, and we've seen the sport develop from absolutely from a very small embryo of a single discipline to what it is now, where kite surfing is big in all sorts of disciplines in mm. waves in you know in freestyle and racing and speed uh, you name it a kite is versatile so it's important that the riders are too yeah and i think it's super important to get that message to you know young athletes out there also you know it's not all about just being on the water you know you you know a lot a lot of the brands what are they looking for more than looking for a rider they're looking for an ambassador. I mean, look at this wave here from Joe, all the way from the top. There ain't a better view than that. Joe, from top to bottom, all the way down. I reckon that is what we're going to call the nail in the coffin. Boom. I mean, I can keep saying, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Silver, all the way down the line. Now, I am going to look forward and see what that score is. Like I was saying, the young riders, you have to be a champion on and off the water. Brands, they're looking for ambassadors. They're not, you know, in the end, you know, mother nature and the way of the jungle is, there's always going to be someone who's better than you. There's always going to be someone who can do a better grab, who can do a better move, who can surf away better. But if you are that more complete rider and for a brand, you can portray yourself, how people out on the beach, do demos, go, you know, always have a smile, always have a shaka, then go out on the wave and uh, the water can kill it. Do well in school, have languages, you're a more complete package and that is going to be more valuable to a brand and then for yourself as a person. For sure. And, you know, one piece of advice I give to anyone doing anything and it, it applies specifically in uh, sports like kite surfing is as long as you enjoy it, you're going to do it well. So it's not about doing something you don't, you know, you don't enjoy. It's about following something you enjoy. It's about really dedicating yourself to be the best at that discipline or the best that you can be at that discipline. And then, and then just enjoying the ride. And yeah. I think that applies, you know, across all the disciplines of kite surfing. No, absolutely. I am going to say one of the high moments of this competition so far is you having a personal delivery of fries to the booth. That is definitely <laughs> way up there, way up there, Mr. Core. Well, you know, unfortunately we don't have a booth camera today, but tomorrow maybe we can, uh, we can get that on film. <laughs> yeah, no. Chips ahoy, chips ahoy. But yeah, 90 seconds to go. Joe Silver waiting. I want to see the score of that last wave because that was one of the long ones. Okay, so we're waiting for a score to be dropped there for him. So looking like above the fours, 4.13. So Joe Silver, nice wave. And here we can see Yanis. There you can start to see the little furry brown monsters that are the rocks poking through the water. But at the moment, it looks like Joe, that could have been the nail in the coffin. Mate, that was the wave of the heat for me, I think, you know, talking about the conditions. It's been hard out there, 20 minute heats and probably only two sets came through the whole time, but like you say, two sets is all you need, I yeah. think, you know, as long as you're on one of them. Yeah, exactly, as long as you're in the right place at the right time, that can apply across multiple conditions you will be able to land those waves and continue on so yep it does look like there's not a lot of energy out the back there so joe silver unofficially
20 as seconds gonna to go. be cleaning this one up, meaning he will be continuing on. And let's see who he's up against next. A winner of heat number 14. First of 14, he is going to be going up against, if this is official, Sebastian Ribeiro in that round number three. So that is going to be a powerful heat, but you know, any heat can be a final in the GK. And there it is. That is the butter red flag in the sky. Let's check out the highlights of that last heat. And welcome back everybody to the first day of competition here for the Qatar Airway GK Kite World Tour. Just had a you know, little French Lilo popping into the booth, just one of our videographers, making sure he better get the gold today, that's all I'm saying. Stacking the clips out there on the beach. One of the most important jobs here in the event is obviously capturing the action as it happens. Making sure he's getting the best shots possible. It's not easy out there, especially when there's only two sets every 20 minutes. But yeah, but it's looking looking like there are some nice conditions. I just heard a flag. We did have green flag already, maybe just someone signaling. So, yet we are green and go, go, go. So, coming up, we have uh, Titi Lopez is up against Woodley Hall. So, let's have a little look, see. Woodley before had a pretty good heat as he was in the heat with Ayrton Cosolino and Mitu Montero, but he was throwing down, which was nice, you know. Obviously, that was one of the top heats of that round, number one, and the first official big standoff here of the competition. Now, waiting to see, because, I mean, Tom, those sets are really taking their time now. Yeah, they are. It's a waiting game out there, I think, at the moment. And, uh, you know, not just a waiting game, probably a frustration game for these guys. And it's tiring to stay upwind and stay in position the whole time. And uh, I think not only is it tiring, it's frustrating, especially if the conditions aren't delivering. So you've got to keep your head about you. You can't let that frustration get to you. You've just got to be ready for when that, you know, for when that one wave does come. Um, you've got to be there. You've got to be on it. Yeah, you got to be in position. I mean, let's not forget also because some of the guys mentioned here on the stream, 2024, the Olympics for kiting. Yeah. So we're finally the kite surfing becoming part of the Olympics, which I think, 
You know, I think it is great for the sport in general because that's going to open doors to potential, you know, grants, potential sponsors for athletes to be able to, you know, take the sport, which is a niche sport, to a more broad spectrum, you know, kind of you know, mass market. And it's really cool to see it being part of, obviously, you know, the Olympics. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this, this event itself is a special world sailing event. And we're sort of moving towards world sailing in terms of, you know, the industries combining. And like I was saying earlier about multi-sports athletes appreciating each other and yep. appreciating what they do. This is the way I see it going personally. You know, yeah. whether you're foiling, you're kiting, you're winging, you're surfing, it's about appreciating the elements, the the you know the, the elements of nature that we're playing with. And I see 2024 Olympics kite foil racing being a big part of the communication of our sport, the future of like you say, the brands and the industries that have helped support all of this that we've done from a very niche embryo of a sport and hopefully like push kite surfing and the awareness of kite surfing in the right direction that's yeah. not that's not to say i'm gonna be a kite foiler my whole life but do, do, do you know what i mean i think in general it's gonna be a, it's gonna be good for the whole sport no i think it is because in the end you know the idea is to get more people involved into the sport so if people see any discipline of our sport anywhere and obviously with the Olympics it's going to be a lot more mass media so they'll probably see it in different locations and with the fall they can actually ride at locations that isn't possible for other disciplines of the kiting they're going to go oh you know that looks interesting maybe I'll go and do a kite course maybe I'll go and do you know go and get ourselves on there or maybe I'll come to Cape Verde and start dropping in on a wave like we have here Guess as we can course. see making a move already I mean that is looking like Woodley all the way down a nice opener here for me. Going to go off the back. Let's see. It looked like Titi was about to stake off on one as well. Getting some chalk on the board, definitely. But yeah, I think yeah, an important point, especially about the Olympics and about kite surfing in general, is it's an incredibly versatile sport. I mean, obviously here we're watching replay. At, we're at a kite surfing event, which is a very special discipline that gets us into contact with nature in a very special way from waves to wind to to everything to do with um, you know what makes this so special but you know with kite foiling that what's going to be the Olympics it has the same thing but on a completely different level yep. and kite surfing has the ability to apply itself across so many different disciplines mm. and I think for me that's what's been so special about the sport and why I've loved to be involved in the sport for so long and also you know to be of to have been kite surfing for over 20 years why well, I've never got bored with it because we are definitely never getting bored of it. 20 years already, mate. We don't don't say that. We're giving away our age, dude. We're giving away <laughs> our age. <laughs> mate, yeah. I first saw it in 1998. Oh, yeah, it's been it's been it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It has yeah. been a minute, but no, it's still only 19. At 19 and a half, mate. 19 and a half. <laughs> but no, it is. It's like you say. It's so it's so cool to see how far it's come, and now with this little extra push, it's. Also, one of the things I like to see, you know, is that there was a kind of a few dull years where you wouldn't see any young kids in the sport. It was kind of the people who had been there or the people who were kind of, you know, starting to fade out. And now you can see, you go down to the schools, you come here to Cape Verde, you can see a lot of the youngsters, a lot of the young kids that want to go involved. You go to Brazil, you go to the Lagoon, and there's all these, you know, little young kids getting into the sport. And I think that's so important because in the end, you know, it keeps the future generations alive, which is what we need. And, you know, hopefully each one of us can give them our little, you know, grain of sand to the, to the dune and hopefully be able to, you know, so they don't make some of the mistakes that me made but then you do have to fall across a few stones if you want to have a flat pavement mate. <laughs> you do indeed i think that's so um, so cool about the the scene here as well especially with riders like me too Ayrton. Mm. you really see them giving back to the community you really you really see that you really see them giving back to um, to the community. You really see them helping the younger generation, and you also see you see like the opportunity. Like they recognise the opportunity that this sport gives their younger generation. Yeah. You know? And I think you know riders like myself are always looking for opportunities to help, advise, and uh, you know give give back. Beautiful wave there from Titi. 
unfortunately just going off the back there. Oh, 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 skimming the rocks there, Woodley. As we saw that nice wave there from Titi, but just not quite being able to get it. Let's have a look at the scores. 3.20 Woodley, uh, 2 plus, and here we can see the replay of that last wave. So back into action. TD there, we can see a 3.20 for Woodley and a 3.25 for TD. So quite even up there. Well, I hope some of you guys and girls are enjoying this. But, yep, some, some of us do have to go back to work, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. Um, don't forget, tune in tomorrow because tomorrow could be, I'm not saying this officially, there is a possible due to timestamp that tomorrow could be the final day if we get through this round number two which obviously we are going to there's only eight hours left of a competition forecast is looking great for tomorrow and for sunday so if conditions are on the athletes are here and it is all, gu all guns blazing and green light we will be finishing it off tomorrow if not we will split it up and then continue it on on sunday so don't forget make sure to check out all the social media channels we will be telling you guys and girls to when where and how to connect and get here onto the live stream i hope you guys are enjoying it if you want any questions gear questions rider questions who's with who who's doing what just let us know and we will get you the ins and the outs of the tour so far it is great just sharing the booth here with my buddy tom court it has been a minute as we said we've known each other probably plus 20 years already mate yeah mate yeah yeah it's been a long ride we've been both involved in the sport from a very young age ourselves and it's a pleasure to be here at the gka being able to give back a little bit even if it's just a few lame jokes you know exactly. but it's uh, it's it's a great industry it's a great sport and uh, it's great to see the best riders in the world battling it out for what will be the beginning of a very exciting 2024 season and um, I think tomorrow and the next days we're going to see some world-class kite surfing action um, so it's going to be very exciting so make sure you stay tuned yeah, and it's so cool to see people tuning in. You, got, you know, we've got Didi there coming in from Barranquilla, Colombia. got friends in Spain, you back in the UK, France, all around the world connecting. That's why we always do do the good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when you are tuning in. If it's 5 o'clock somewhere, I do hope you guys are opening up a nice cold one. Day number one, GK Kite Surf World Cup here in Cape Verde. This is round number two, elimination round on the water. We have out there heat number seven. Titi Lopez, one of the very powerful local boys, is up against Woodley Ho, who has been performing very well so far. And you can see them just starting to drop in. Woodley, yet another inside roller, slightly behind. He has a pretty much the same top score as his Titi Lopez, but so far trying to improve that backup score. And I tell you what, these guys are going to need wheels soon. Those rocks are really starting to come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're either going to need wheels or no fins. One of the two, but yes. You do not want to end up on these rocks here. I have seen a few riders... Um, end up on these rocks and if you crash your kite here it is also not something to be uh, something to be scoffed at because once the lines are in those rocks there's no coming back from that that's a, that's a sentence that you don't want to be uh, completing yeah there'll be but multiple f-bombs being dropping if you do that exactly but look, there's some good waves going down now Look at the crowds building in the foreground. We've got a nice atmosphere on the beach. Everybody's starting to get pumped. To be fair, it's coming around to that time in the afternoon where people are going to start getting amped. As you say, Joe, start getting cold drinks in their hands. And uh, it couldn't be a better place to sit and watch some of the world's best kite surfers. Yeah, there you can see. I mean, you do have it as cinema out there right now. The waves are starting to... Looks like it might be starting to push back as we already passed that low tide. So we're now pushing back on the high. 
Here we can see that last wave there from Tiddick. So obviously one of the local boys, he's got a few local supporters down here. But yeah, they really have to get past that section. Oh, and dodge some of the rocks if they want to make their way down. And what a season opener. What a day one we have had here in Cape Verde. Yeah, it's been epic to watch. It's been so nice to be sat here right on the seafront looking at the beautiful break of Punta Preta and we know only going to get better in the next couple of days. I mean, it's been a slow start today through some of the heats. We saw the potential this morning through some of the early heats and I'm pretty sure we're at, what, Bangalore tide now? So I think we might start to see the ocean livening up for our eyes in about 10 minutes time but you know don't call me a weatherman so. we'll, call, we'll call you the weather maker mate the we call you the weather the, maker the rain maker rain maker okay <laughs> yeah yeah but yep so seven and a half minutes on the clock 20 minutes is the name of the game that we've seen out here today top two waves are counting at the moment it is woodley hall in the lead with 6.60 judges criteria what they're looking for linking sections 100 percent surfing it's all about how you surf that way if you can get the power if you can get the vibes that is going to give you the extra kudos and the extra love and shackers from our judges what scores you see up there on your screen is an average score from the five international judges that we have how does that work top score and bottom scores get scratched average of the three middle scores is what ends up on your screen so you've got to impress five judges if you want to get into their good books and get the love out here today so far Ayrton Cosolino highest score of the day above 15 average and above 8.0 on that top wave Sebastian Ribeiro in my opinion looking like also one of those top contenders about 13 points very very nice powerful surfing all the way through and then of course me to Montero Pedro Matos Matthew Lopez continuing on in the competition didn't get any scores in that first heat but now he is in contention as he is already into round number three he is going to be starting off his round number three journey against Charlie Martin Charlie from the reunion Cabrina athlete youngster very very talented young surfer very cool guy on and off the water and he is always one of my underdogs when it comes to the kite surfing competitions so far just coming past that six minute mark to go as this is going to be the second to last male heat of the day and then information i have so far is we'll be continuing on with the women Okay, so these riders got five minutes, just over five minutes left to go. Small waves rolling through, but there's time. There is still time to put chalk on the board. I mean, you've got to be really careful. You're, they're rock dodging at this point. But if you've got any questions, make sure you tune in. Obviously, if you're listening to this, you are already tuned into the live stream. Make sure you get involved in the comment section. Uh, if you want to ask me any questions personally, check out my Instagram, at Caught in the Act. Ask questions on the stories. Ask at Josie Astela any questions. We're going to get involved over the next few days, answering your questions, making the live stream pop off. And uh, hopefully we're going to see some of the world's best kite surfing action right here in Punta Preta, Cape Verde. Because I've got a feeling that the forecast that is on the way is going to be world class for the start of the GKA World Tour, which I can't wait to see personally. And uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to talk about. And not only have we got the kite surfing going on, we've also got the wing foiling going on. And I think that's going to be a very interesting game of foils to be commenting on. Oh, there's going to be some jousting out there on the reef. I can tell you that with the wing foiling. So that's going to be happening as well. Double event, as you're saying, Tom. Now, just got the official information. We will be doing round number one of the women as well. So we're going to have a little look, see who's going to be out there in round number one. So we're going to have... Barbara Sardello, Charlotte Carpentier, Camille Lasseran is going to be in that first heat. And there we can see local boy Titi just taking off with an absolute banger on that last section. Is that going to make the difference because he's trailing so far? A couple of nice turns in there though. Here we go, we've got the replay. 
I would say for the size of the swell at the moment, that was a good wave. Time that and nicely. Yeah, just r every bomb turn was around a rock. <laughs> Yes. That's how you know these riders are skilled. It's the new new slalom wave riding. That's what we call it. But yeah, you know, you can see and literally talking to Ayrton and Mitu, they know where the rocks are. Like when it yeah. gets to these kind of ties, they literally know if they're taking off on this section, they have to ollie past another to be able to continue on. But the best of the best in the game, and they are out here for the championship. Here we have this is a nice one. Lopez dropping in. Boom! Top turn. Back in, easy entry. It's a bit choppy on the, it's a little choppy on the face. That just threw him off there on his bottom turn. But yeah, like you say, the good guys have spent so much time on the water out here that they've probably hit every one of the rocks. Yeah, you can see, yeah, wouldn't he as well going through, just missing out on that bottom section. That wave not opening up so close 6.60 6.15 so pretty much 0.45 of a point in between these two athletes so 0.46 increment is what this man there is going to need if he wants to be able to take the win and continue on in the contest when he obviously is going to be fighting and defending for that not to happen as we approach the final two minutes Study buddy, what size are they riding? What size kites are they riding out there at the moment? It looks like most riders on the water are riding 10 meter kites. Between 10s and 12s, I would say, something like that. It's, it's not that windy, but it's, it's a nice wind strength for riding waves, especially in this wind direction, because once you're on the wave, the wind strength doubles because you've got wind against wave just like right here on the closing minutes of this heat he's got one of the best waves of the heat so far and he needs it can he make it oh, oh, oh. just thrown off there by that rock the old tightrope the old tightrope going across there he's it's about 18 knots i've just been i can see on the station so about 18 knots out there at the moment so yeah like you say a nice wind speed for these kind of conditions exactly exactly but you know different riders like riding different size kites um, it does come a lot down to the size of the rider also I would say the skill of the rider but mostly the size of the rider and some some riders prefer to ride bigger boards higher volume boards smaller kites or bigger kites and lower volu volume boards so you know when it when you come down to world level riding there's no one thing that's right, you know. It's it's up to the rider to kind of tune themselves into what they want to ride, and that can even come down to like the size of the fins they're using. Yep. Um, Everything can, counts. Yeah, it all makes a difference. They were, you know, they have an arsenal of weapons, and they know how to use them. Thirty seconds to go, waiting for that last score. I have a feeling it could have been enough. What are we looking at here? It could it be enough? We will have to find out. As I think there's one more score to be dropped for Titi. I'm just waiting for confirmation on that. So if it does, he could have a chance. If not, it looks like Woodley Hall might have taken the overall win here. But trying to get at the final call. There's the buzzer. We're going to have to wait for the official results to come in of the winner of that heat. And while we do so, let's check the highlights of the action.
and welcome back everybody there you can see the waves just rolling across the reef as we continue on so coming up next we're going to have the final heat of this round number two which is going to be in between at the athletes Johnny Sosa and Arsenio Dia. So a battle for the local boys to see who's going to continue on. So Sansa and Diaz getting ready as we are already started off. Let's go for the action of the men and then we will change over to the women. Yeah, it's going to be uh, <clears throat> interesting to see how they make the most of these conditions. I mean, they're tough conditions out there, to be honest, this afternoon. But I'm, I'm really hoping that this change of tide is going to bring in the swell up the channel. And we're going to start to see some more uh, consistent lumps rolling through. I mean, normally it's typically always like that, depending, you know, depending where you are. But on most surf breaks, when you've got a pushing tide, the swell starts to push through a lot harder. Dropping tides tend to suck swells out the channel. So, hoping that my weatherman skills are calling at least a doubling of the swell size for the females this afternoon. But look, we'll see. Double or nothing, eh, man? That's what it's here. All on the red. Hey. All on the red. There we can see our judges just cruising and perusing and making sure, checking out to see the action on the wave. You can see them hiding in the shade there because it is hot, to say the least, as we got a little sauna ourselves down here in the live booth. And we can see the Portuguese man of war just going across the competition zone as well as we start off. Now we are going to see who is going to continue, Sansa or Diaz, Concunha or Sansa. Funny, some people who is it going to be? Some people pay a lot to sit in a sauna, Jay. Right, very true, mate. But we are, we're going to do it with our clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> you just need a little ice bath. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it is warm, I can tell you that. So, waiting for the athletes to take off on a wave. Then we will see the women going in. So, Sansa or Diaz are going to be so there you can see yep knots we got about 18 as i mentioned before mm -hmm. we will be coming back to punta preta tomorrow at the moment unofficially it looks like we're going to be starting around the same time 10 o'clock first possible start but we'll confirm that on our social media as soon as it locks in forecast looking even better a little bit stronger winds more period on the wave more size on the wave so double digits and double thumbs up for tomorrow sunday looking epic as well will we finish tomorrow or the next day conditions and mother nature will decide well, well even if we finish the kite surfing tomorrow we'll, we've then got the wing foiling to look forward to so either way there's going to be action in some of the biggest swells that this point break has seen all season so far yeah, no, I mean, some of the, you know, a lot of the locals, they're saying it is like, you know, the best swell that is going to be rolling in. And we are so fortunate. Touch wood. Touch wood. That, that will roll in tomorrow. Here we can see I mean, I Arsenio Diaz, backhand rider. Sansa is a fronthand rider, a regular foot. So Arsenio there, you can see Goofy Footer you can see just these, going off the top. These rocks really putting people off right now. <laughs> I mean, re-entry is always hard on this wave anyway. Yeah, re-entry is always difficult on this wave anyway, Yet, let alone when it's this low that the rocks are literally bare. They're, they're kind of waving at you. Yeah. <laughs> they're giving you the old Back wink. Beckoning. Yeah, the old wink. It's like, how you doing? You want to you wanna get involved? Yeah. But yeah, all right, here we can see. So there, that is Sansa there. It's a question of sneaking the turns in between the rocks. Look, there you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Kind of close. Clearing its teeth, but look at the wave behind. Bang, nice turn. Single turn, single turn could be enough. Bang. Yeah, two turns there for Arsenio in the third, kind of just to get off the top. So I reckon Arsenio might be slightly in the lead, just hitting the old refresh button here to see who is it going to be. So at the moment it isn't. I'm going to say Arsenio has a slight advantage.
All right, there we can see Cuncunha, Arsenio Diaz, going around the rocks. It is very, very close here on the inside. Let's see if they're going to be able to get some scores. All right, there we can see the crowd on the side just catching up. So, yes, it is official. We're going to be doing the first round of the ladies coming up next as this is the final heat of the men. So far, Arsenio Diaz in the lead. We can see just waiting for those waves to come in. The swell really has dropped. Is it the calm before the storm or are we going to be seeing less waves? The forecast is looking great for the next two days. That is what we're aiming for to be an hour to get to the finals where that prime time really does start to hit in. There you can see Sansa there just going across the top. Sansa, regular foot rider. Arsenio is the backhand rider out here on the water as we are continuing on final heat of round number two of the men the last man standing whoever wins this heat will continue on in the competition And both of the guys just circling out the back, waiting for those lumps to come in as that is the top section where the swell really does start to hit. As we are trying to see if we have a little bit more motion in the ocean. Let's not forget we're going to have the ladies coming out to play as we are going to be running their round number one. But so far, waves are really far and few between in this heat. And we are here for the final heat of the men, Arsenio Diaz and Jordi Sansa.
All right, so less than nine minutes to go. And these guys, there has been a couple of scores. There's an issue with the internet, surprisingly so, for the scoring. So hopefully that will be resolved very shortly. What I can say, it does look like Arsenio Diaz is in the lead, but very small margin. I will be getting those information to you as soon as possible. But what I can say is there is eight and a half minutes left of this final heat to the men. And then we move on to round number one of the women. Well, we are going to be having coming out on to the competition floor is going to be Barbara Stagelo, Charlotte Carpentier, and Camille Lossedan. And then we will move on to Simona Schitzmann, Sofia Monti, and Capucin Delanois, Daniela Moreno, Selena Luz, Kessiani Rodriguez. And then we have Julia Borgi, Sonia Bunter, and Muna White. So four women's heat, and then we will be calling it a day. And just getting caught up on that inside section here, not being able to get that wave. So, scores are in. Internet is back. Yes. 5.8 for Arsenio Diaz. Jordi Sansa with a 3.08. Here we can see that last replay. Jordi. Here we go. Navigating across the rocks. There you can go. Going off the top now. This is where he's going to try and get that second section where the rocks go a little bit further inside, but just not being able to get the money. So Arsenio Diaz is definitely number one in the lead so far. And the waves really have dropped down as we come to the final moments of the afternoon. And I'm still waiting for confirmation if the women are going to be going out. I have been told yes, but I will say it. Conditions are looking a lot lighter and smaller out there at the moment. As soon as I know you will. But meanwhile, enjoying the final heat of the men. What a first day here. The season opener for the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. What a day it has been. Already some solid sets, some solid waves coming through. And just great to be back in Cape Verde, Island of Sal. You can see some of the guys even starting to get out, if I'm not mistaken, on some of the... No, that's not D-Lab, that's an SLS. So not be surprised to see some of the D-Lab kites coming out when it gets lighter. Some of the brands already incorporating the Alula, that new revolutionized material. Lighter, stronger. It's about 50% lighter and three times the strength than the normal typical Dacron. You can see, you know, there's a few brands, Ocean Rodeo, we've seen RRD, we've seen also do a turn with the D-Lab series. And then we'll obviously, you know, the variants of other brands where you can see, you know, the Hukipa material. And obviously it's kite design is getting to a point where the designs are so refined where what brands are looking for and looking into is construction. Uh, looking into different materials to be able to improve those designs due to the characteristics of that material. Same happens with the boards. You know, we've had boards, you know, coming in with, you know, materials such as Negro, you know, back in the day with the surfboards when they had the cork top to make sure for the kiting. Then we, you know, you had the spider fibers, the aramids, the Negras, UDs and the, and the biaxes. It's, you know, evolution on the construction, the materials that are there really be able to give both the boards and the kites, the flex, the torsion, the twist to be able to perform in all conditions because now 
all those different disciplines you know you have guys jumping 30 meters in the air with the kite underneath them and doing those radical kite loops with the big air needs to be a certain type of equipment big wave surfing big wave surfing other equipment normal surfing other equipment is really cool to see so many brands with you know that whole garage full of toys and at the moment what these guys need is a little bit of some quarters to throw in the old wave machine because it ain't sending anything their way yeah in the end it doesn't matter what kites you're using if there's no waves there's no waves no you might as well come onto the shore and have a beer <laughs> well i'm sure these riders will be more than happy to do that once they get off the water especially the ones that don't make it through this round because that's uh final knockout for those guys yeah unfortunately there's already been a few riders that are not going to be continuing on the competition as we have completed this round number two so far in this heat you can see the winds dropping now as yeah well, it? it really is starting to drop i wouldn't be surprised if there is going to be a questionable round. questionable announcement on the women's side it is already five o'clock in the afternoon it does get dark around seven so we're looking at four heats of the women. So there's definitely no way that we would finish the round number one of the women. But the question is, is do we continue or not? And that is going to be a question. I'm just going to jump out to ask. So you can tell just by looking at the water, you know, if you, if you don't kite surf or you don't do any wind sports, you can, you can actually tell by looking at the water what the wind is doing. And it's one of those vital skills that all of these riders have is to be able to tell and read the wind conditions by the effect that it has on the water. Just like looking at the leaves on the trees or, you know, all the sort of natural elements around you to be able to tell what the wind's doing. Wow, he is really running a fine line on the rocks here just to get that bottom turn in. But he's made the most of that last little wave. One minute, 48 seconds to go. He just really milked that all the way through onto the inside, right in front of the judges. So what you've got to do is to make sure the wave is seen, make sure you're right there in the pocket. I mean, he could have easily lost a fin here. Especially once the wave's broken and you're riding right out in front of it, that is the shallowest part of the wave. So it really um, bears its teeth. Okay, so if you're watching on the live stream, don't forget to comment with any questions. It's been a big day of the first day of the first round of the GKA Kite Surfing World Championships here in Cape Verde on the island of Sal at the break of Punta Brata. And we've seen a range of conditions. I mean, it's actually been quite amazing how the conditions have changed just through a few hours that we've been competing so far. We've seen everything from double over head sets to what I would say double over knee sets that are coming through now. And uh, yeah, it just shows how quickly things can change. They can go from double over head to double over grasshopper very fast. And it, uh, yeah. Tip of the iceberg, mate. There's more underneath than you can see on top. That's what's happening. Exactly, exactly that. And, uh, and, and that is the sport. That is kite surfing. That is anything to do with wind and waves and anything to do where we play with nature. I think it's the best thing about all of these sports is it educates us to, you know, appreciate nature, appreciate the elements around us, learn about the playground that we grew up in. And, um, yeah, just uh, take what is given to us absolutely so that is it i just popped out to the official we are continuing on they are going to keep a close eye on the conditions the waves are still there but not so much as before the whole second part of that second round conditions were dropping if the wind gets any lighter they will be cancelling but at the moment verdict is we continue on a while before we do so let's have a look at some highlights in a short commercial break
and welcome back everybody so it is time to change over to the women discipline as we are continuing here coming up out on the water Barbie Escavero, Charlotte Carpentier and Camille Lasseron is going to be the first heat three athletes out on the water 20 minutes top two waves are the ones that count they have 10 waves that they can drop into to get potential scores on who is it going to be girls are out here already as if we're going to be closing out the afternoon of what a good way what an impressive way Punta Preto already throwing down some nice bombs here for the season opener here in Cape Verde yeah we've seen everything from double overhead sets to, to knee high sets today it's been a very day of action on the water but nonetheless action yeah, action is the word, and passion. I mean, you, you, one of the things that you were, uh, we saw Julien down there on the beach asking, he was asking a few riders, what Cape, in one word, how would you, Tom, describe Cape Verde? One word, go. One word? St uh, I can't remember what I said to Julian. <laughs> 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 Probably shouldn't compete, repeat it on the live, live stream, but no, I mean, passion, what, one word for Cape Verde is is stoke i think you know like everybody here is stoked everybody here is their, their motto is stress free the the vibe yeah you know i mean just we look out the window next to us everybody's like playing football all the kids are stoked there's no stress um you know it's just a really really stoked place to be and everybody here is stoked to be here so i mean i think that's a fair enough summation. you see i said sexy <laughs> <laughs> well there you go yeah i wouldn't repeat what i first said so. no no <laughs> and there we can see jean paul was giving some kudos out there to charlotte charlotte carpentier she is one of the veterans on tour she's been around since the beginning very talented strapless freestyle hangs out and lives in cape verde for a most part of the year so she is pretty much i think we could call her local knows this break very well let's see if that little bit of local knowledge is going to give her the advantage but she is up against barbara sardello from italy and camille losseran from switzerland yeah and this is a hard break to uh it's a especially when the conditions are like they are right now small sets few and far between low tide light wind it's tough but you know the, these girls are they're, they're out there they're gonna they're doing it they're gonna smash some uh, smash some waves but look i mean the, the wave size has dropped significantly yeah it has i mean they're in the blue still unfortunately against the screen we've waiting for some information to come in i know charlotte is out there on the court all right there, there is go. going to be if I am not mistaken, that is Camille. looking. That is going to be Camille. Yeah, exactly. So navigating nice around the rocks and nice surfing nice there from wave. Her. Oh, oh, throwing some spray, working onto the inside. You see, I think that's the key right now. The inside section. Just small, getting just you know, like getting in get, there to the beach. Get, exactly. You know? Just getting a couple ones out there. And here, this is going to be Charlotte Carpentier, the core athlete. Here she go, dropping in. Nice size wave, actually. Yeah, it's nicely okay. Good the section. Line. Boom! Second section. Let's see if she can go down the line in the pocket. so making our way out at the moment still waiting for some numbers to come in but i'm going to say camille is definitely going to be in the lead there tom because that was a very nice wave there from her yeah that was definitely a definitely the best wave yet and uh, managed to get about four or five turns i would say taking it right onto the inside and like i said just analyzing it myself right now the inside section is where it's at
All right, so yeah, just got information from the Judge Tower restarting the system due to another internet lag. So I can say that Camille Losadan is in first position. Second position, we have Charlotte Carpentier. Third position, Barrio Sagredo, and they uh, will be back on with that very shortly. We are already two and a half minutes out of the 20 into this heat as we now are going to be continuing on Round number one of the women as they are premiering out here for the season opener of the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour down here in Cape Verde Island of Sal Punta Preta. As my man here, Tom Corp, puts one of the seven wonders of the kite surfing world. This beautiful point break right hander. Got a couple of nice little hollow sections and then rolls and wraps around the reef and all the way down onto the inside. And nicely put on the inside at the moment, it looks like that far left hand corner. If you can pick up on a couple of those little rollers, you're going to be able to get a couple of turns in because the ones that are all the way up on the right hand side of the reef do look like they're coming too close to the rocks. Yeah, definitely. And like I say, I mean, if you're into wave riding on a kite and that's your thing this is one of those locations that you aspire to to make it to and to come to it's it's there are probably a handful of kite waves in the world that you really need to get to if you if you really love kite surf wave riding and this this has got to be out there in for sure the top 10 and uh, on its day which i think we're going to get this week um it is the best that there is yeah, and here we can see that looks like Barbara Sagelo making her way along in the blue. And she's going to be pushing it all the way down. It is very hard to see against the sun. That is going to be, that is going to be Barbara. Okay, ponytail Barbara. And we have Camille Lush around the other duotone athlete in the shorty wetsuit. That is going to be her. Bang on and, the inside there. And then also let's not forget that we have Charlotte Carpentier out there on the core. Barbara on a wave right here. One of the sort of set waves, if mm. you can call it a set wave at the moment, but they're... Set de ripple. Yeah, a set ripple. They're, they're dealing with some difficult conditions, we're not going to lie. I mean, my prediction of the tide change <laughs> has not come in. Uh, yet again, highlighting how difficult it is to predict anything that's going on here with the weather. Um, I mean, the locals know it best, um, and it's... You know, it can change every five minutes. Can something different can happen here on this break? So it's uh, we, we wait and see. The tide could keep pushing, and the, the the waves could pick up. Yeah, I mean we're just about halfway past that low tide, so sometimes it does kind of lull around here. That's why we are kind of waiting to see it push on sunset around half six to seven o'clock so we've got about an hour more of like 20 minute heat you're looking at maybe trying to be able to get through two to three heats depending on it all right now white lycra that is going to be camille lasarang if i'm not mistaken we're still waiting for these confirmations but yes that is going to be camille and here let's get a little bit closer as we can see already yeah, dropping one. in yes that Convincing is going to be barbara can she get in yes she does push is strong here we go Nice wave, nice wave, not such nice wind, hard to get back into it. I think again, the tide changing could make a difference to the wind too, right? Yeah, it is looking very tough out there at the moment. And we could see there Charlotte Carpentier, the core athlete, dropping in as well. But as you say, Tom, it is looking hard out there. There is the view that you want to see. Charlotte Carpentier, nice bottom turn there from her. Bang, linking some turns. This is what the judges really want to see is linking turns, fluid Nice. Links. Ooh, didn't quite hold on to it at the end. But you can see there from that angle how quickly you get washed up onto those rocks. It can happen before you know it. But that was definitely one of the highest scoring waves of the heat so far, I would say three or four solid linking turns 
Uh, information just in, Charlotte Carpentier in the lead, Camille Lassalan second, Barbara Stagelo third so far in this heat. Fresh button here to see if that is Buzzy. back on. Still isn't on, unfortunately. We have had up, downs, left, right, and all the way around internet issues today. We do apologize, but sometimes if you come to Paradise in these remote locations, it's a price you have to pay. Yeah, most people pay to come for no internet, you know, these days. So, got to disconnect to reconnect, mate. <laughs> it's just the way it is. The best way to disconnect is by far getting, getting out on the water on a kite. And riding some waves, in yeah, my opinion. It is. We're a nice cold one at the end of the session. Life is good, and life is definitely better in board shorts. Life is definitely better in board shorts. And this is the place to do it. Sal, Cape Verde, at Punta Preta, the legendary wave. Is this the start of the pushing tide swell pulse? That's the question, because I've been calling it all day, <laughs> and so far it's yet to happen. But it looks like there's a few little sets coming through. Hard to see into the light, but these girls are making the best of what they've got right now. Boom. A few little turns. Just getting it done. And so close at the bottom section there to those rocks. All right, here we can see Camille. What has she got as she is playing catch up at the moment? This could make the difference between her and Charlotte Carpentier. Here we go, all right. I think she's bailing out of that one. She's far on the inside now. As you can see, it comes down to the beach break right at the end there. But look at that setup. I mean, Reef breaks don't get much p more perfect, to be honest. It does not get much more perfect than that. All right, so it looks like we're going to have a quick look at the scores as it is the timer that is giving issues now. And let's see how our athletes are doing. So, Barbara Scardella, so yeah, there you can see, waiting for those scores to appear. So there we can see making their way back out and that wind is really shying off now. They're out there on 10 meters. The gusts are coming through. You can see our race director starting to look across the top of the judge tower to make sure conditions are still there. Athletes, they are getting waves. The conditions are hard, but they are moving through. Not an elimination round out on the water so far. As we are about 14 minutes into this heat, let's see what happens. Yeah, it is important that we get... It is important that we get... Round one of the women's. Yeah, it is important that we get this done. Round one of the women, so 
when the conditions start to kick in tomorrow we are ready and set for those elimination rounds it may seem like we're running an event in uh, less than ideal conditions right now but actually it's very important to get round one out of the way or not out of the way but at least complete so that tomorrow we can press on with the really good conditions that we're going to get the best wave conditions and the riders can really get stuck into to what they're here for absolutely and the forecast is just getting better and better just had a update reading on that we are looking at three meters now at 16 seconds with 20 knots of wind and the swell is even shifting a little bit more to the side which is just going to give it clean access to punta preta so fingers crossed the weatherman or the weather maker that i have here on my right is correct there we go and we will have epic conditions coming at us but anyway consider the forecast we had we've had some beautiful waves out there today we just want an extra a little push of mother nature send us some waves and throw us a bone for these final women heats for this last few hours of this day here on the beautiful island of sal and cape verde doesn't get too much better to be fair no i mean the sun is shining the golden hour is approaching as we can start to see those orange colors coming out, I'll tell you what, we might even start to be getting a tan here, mate. It's all dangerous. I think I'm getting more than a tan, mate. I think <laughs> I've uh, been red for days. They call you the lobster for no reason, mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see if this is on yes we have scores so once again we do apologize all right it looks like i'm gonna have to do a little bit of math here so it is looking like camille lasaran is in the lead so far she is taking some 4.0 rise then we have also uh, Charlotte Carpentier in second and Barbara Stagelo in first. So Charlotte Carpentier has about, she's got a decent four and a mid two. Camille has a high four and a mid four. So that is going to be very close in between them. And then Barbara is kind of mixing out in between the twos and the threes. So close in between these three athletes, but it is Camille Lachalan in the lead. Yeah, she's doing well out there, to be fair. She's uh, rock, rock dodging and... Uh, and riding waves right to the end of the reef. But like I said, look, she's right down by the beach now, and I think that's that's the spot. That's where the waves are peaking up the most, and there's the best turns to be had right at the end of the, at the end of the beach. Mm. Yeah, it's the only place they're actually going to be, you know, kind of being able to pick up on some waves. I'm looking at the top here. We're getting close to be coming to the closing moments of the heat. One and a half minute left. One and a half minute left of this heat. Oh, nice wave here. And look at this. Was the weatherman right? Is the pushing tide bringing some swell with it? That's what I want to know. I think it might be, Joe. You know? It could be. Have we got a final look set to set. give a little bit of pressure? Yes, we do. And it looks like each rider is going to be able to take off on one of them. So this could change it up because everybody is very close. Here we go, we could be seeing some buzzer beaters. There's Camille. Last around on the inside, already starting to get a few hits. Like clockwork, 30 minutes after low tide. As we said, here it comes. Ain't here for a haircut, we are definitely cooking with gas now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're in for some action. We've got the first round of the female heats this afternoon. What's the running time? It is coming out on one minute to go, as I can see that yellow flag going down. So final minute, it doesn't look like there's much action out there anymore as those waves are coming in. Maybe that top rider could have a possibility. I think that's coming. If I'm not mistaken, we'll have to see and when they get a little bit closer to her. But there it is. Red flag is in the sky. That is it for the heat number one as we continue on with some of the highlights before a short commercial break.
Welcome back, everybody, as we continue on. So I just uh, popped out to the race director. We are going to be continuing on. So here we can see we have uh, Simona Schwarzman, Sofia Monti, Capucin Della Noir, heat number two, round number one of the women. As we have at the moment, it's about 15 to 18 knots. Sun is starting to go down. We've got about an hour of light more. So the idea, if the wind conditions stay there, we will be continuing on through round number one of the women. And here we can see dropping in, that is Capucine de la Noire. Nice, managed to get a nice wave at the start of the heat. I mean, nice wave, small wave, but a nice wave. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a game of... Uh, it's a game of wave selection, as it always has been, I guess, out there at the moment. But enthusiasm. It's a game of enthusiasm on the wave that you have selected. It certainly is. And we can see Sofia Monti also out there, as this is heat number two around number one. And then after that, we are going to be moving on and continuing. We're going to have Daniela Moreno, Serena Lutz, and Kessiani Rodriguez. So Capos in Delamar out there on the north. We have Simona Schwarzen at the, the core. And then Sofia Monti is on the duotone. So those are the three athletes on your screen. So far, there she is. Capos in Delanois, your number one athlete in the world. Steaming down the line on that one. Nice wave. Oh. Nicely timed. There we go. That's a bit more of what we want to see. Yeah. Get that inside section. Oh. Yeah, nicely done. Oh, nicely that. done there. As she is out on the core. So good to see there from Simona. And then let's not forget, also, we're going to be having our world champion appearing on that last seat, which is going to be Muna White, Capuzin Delanois, second overall last year. So top athletes out here on the water. Who is going to be taking it already? Capuzin looking like she's going to be landing something in about the fours. Sofia Monti yet to score. And then Simona Strassman. We will see coming out of Switzerland what she has for us here as we saw her in silt and it's great to see her back here in Cape Verde. It's getting tricky to see with the light. We've got the sun dropping behind the waves, so the sun sets literally straight off the coast here. So as we get later into the day, the camera's looking dead into the sun. But it does look like the swell size is building slightly, so there is uh, there's good news. A few nice waves being ridden and definitely a few nice sets rolling through. So all the girls heading back up to the top of the contest area, making sure they're in the right position for any sets that do roll through. But they are few and far between, and it is making the 20 minute heat seem like a very, very short time to be on the water. Because uh, there's probably only three or four rideable waves coming through in that 20 minute heat. So you've got to be in the right position at the right time and ready to go when they come through. So there's a game of chess going on at that red boy at the top end of the uh, competition box. But as we said earlier, it's just as much about the rider's energy as it is about the energy of the ocean. And these girls need to be ready to ride every wave that comes their way. All right, so waiting for scores at the moment. Definitely is Capuzin Delamar in the lead. She's got a 
medium four and a low three is the numbers that are going to be appearing on her screen. Okay, so Sophia dropped a score of a 0 0.83. Not a massive score, but it's got chalk on the board. And then Capucine de Lanois dropped a score, a combined, well, a combined score of 6.43 with a 3.23. Actually, that could also have been a mistake. I think that was the last heat. We continue to have technical issues here on the live stream um, oh no and we're back it was correct 3.23 and a 3.20 combined score of a 6.43 Capucine de Lanois currently in the lead making the most of the two sets that have come through in this heat um, and it really is a game of making the most of what is coming in at the moment because we have not seen that bump in the waves that we were expecting as the tide changed. I'm guessing the tide is slow to change or the swell is indeed dropping. But it is, uh, it's quite interesting how quickly things change here. So you never know what might happen. So scores are back. Timer is on. It's all bells are whistling right now. So 6.43, Capuzin de la Mar, world's number two last season. One of the top overall riders. She is one of the few athletes to land the triple of the strapless freestyle discipline. So she is a very talented young French athlete. Hailing out of France, living out there in prayer, and now just 12 minutes to go, she is in that top spot so far. One thing I will say is, when the conditions are like this, it becomes very stressful on the water, I think, mm. for these girls. Yeah. Scavenging. Yeah, it's scavenging conditions. You're really sort of under high pressure to kind of put some, put some scores down, and uh, you might end up going on waves that you really don't want to go on. Yeah, you and, really have uh, to be patient. You're up against the clock. But it does look like there's a little set coming through, I can see on, on the left. So we might have uh, whoever's out the back right now is in a good position. Yeah, there we can see out that Sofia Monti out there on the duotone. And we can see Capucine is just there on the north making her way across the screen. Uh, the Both Simona and Sofia here on the inside caught out. Capuzine in position. Let's see if she can get another wave. Some teabagging going on. Here we go. She's in the lineup. Oh, this is looking like a good potential score. Here we go. Capuzine Delanar dropping on one of the better set waves we've seen in the past hour. This is nice. It's a nice looking wave. It's rolling onto the reef. Nice. Good first turn. Bang. She knows what she's doing. Oh. Oh, yes. I reckon solid three turns there. Solid three turns. And probably one of the best sets we've seen in a while, so made the most of it. Um, I think it's only going to improve her lead. Yeah, so, I, uh, I agree. I agree. Let's not forget ten waves. Each top two waves are the ones that count. So far, Delanois is in the lead by far. With ten minutes to go, it's looking like there's, a, there's still all to play for. 
It is. No, it's any, anybody's game. I mean, we, we've seen this, and you have those buzzer beaters, and especially when it comes to wave, only two waves are needed. So if you have a decent score, and you get on that wave one second before the buzzer, it could count. You could get a 10.0, and it is a win for you. So it ain't over until the buzzer, as they like to say. Here we can see Sofia Monti so, on the inside, trying to get a little bit of that inside roller. So how does it work, then? If you are on the wave... Regardless of how far away yep. from the peak. If you're on the swell, if you are on, on the, the swell, swell. You, you that wave counts. And the buzzer goes. And you the, still the, the wave, wave still counts. counts. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's interesting. That's yep. a good good knowledge. So there, the, there is kind of the same in surfing. If they are up on their feet before the buzzer, the wave counts. Okay, that's that's a good thing to know, isn't it? Yes. I mean, that's potentially a huge strategical. Um, you could be waiting, but if you wait too long and you get past there, it's that the kind of like what we've been saying the whole day. You have to find that sweet spot because we saw it in the first round with Matthew, who's waiting for that wave, didn't appear, so unfortunately couldn't score. You've got to be, uh, you know, I think what a lot of athletes do, which is kind of, you know, when it came to freestyle, you had your base moves that you'd go down and then you start to improve on them and go into it. Here with the waves is the same. Get that, you know, get those two kind of that first bullet out of the chamber, secure yourself a, you know, medium to decent score and then start to work on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Work on that combination mm -hmm. score so that you can uh, hopefully solidify an unbeatable score. But these are low scoring conditions out there, so it can, anything can change. That's Anything can change, and Mother Nature is boss. I would say it's very unlikely you're going to get a seven-plus point wave right now. I don't think now. so. Uh, I would agree with you. We haven't seen a decent set for the last 45 minutes. At least, I would say, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some movement out there. So there you can see on the core all the way back, that is Samoa Smarts run. Then we can see Sofia Monti on the duotone in the middle. Capuzzi and Delanois on the north on the right-hand side. Day one here, GK Kitesurf World Cup, Cape Verde, Punta Preta. This right-hander that just rolls and kind of opens all the way across the bay. Just under eight minutes to go here of this heat two round number one of the women. It not only looks challenging for the wave size right now, but also for the for the wind strength. I mean, just from the drone shots um, that we can see from above, you can see that the wind is holy. Um, you can see that the gusts on the water are not making the conditions easy for the riders at all to stay in the right place for the lineup. So there's a lot of challenges just just to be out there at this point in time. I think. But I do think strategically, working your way all the way down the line towards the beach end yep. it is definitely paying off. It looks like it's working. There we can see Simona here. But look at that. It is really starting to get very hard for our athletes out there. One of the things Juan Antonio, our race director, did say, if the winds continue to drop off, he will call it. It is not quite there, but it does look like it's a lot holier than before. It's always tough. It's on a break like this. It's always difficult to stay up and in the spot and uh, to to remain in in the correct position. But you do need to have the right kite up. So if the conditions change drastically whilst you're out there, it's very difficult to to maintain. So riders either need to come in and change their k kites equipment or or it needs to be cooled, I guess. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we were talking about before on equipment sites is the volume of boards. Some of the athletes are out there with boards that don't have a lot of volume. That's all good when you have power in your kite or you're flying down a wave with speed. But when it starts to get holy, that little extra bit of volume can kind of navigate your way through those lulls. So you really, you know, sometimes you can see some of the athletes bringing out those fatter, chunkier boards when it gets to those closing moments and still Capuzzi and Delamar picking off another set wave. Couple of turns, again, getting scores on the board. Riding very well here, the young French lady. Got Julian there in the foreground. Stancing it the out. The human tripod getting the shots. I ain't going to say anything against that. <laughs> I'm not going to. I don't want to ask how, why, or what you have that knowledge from. <laughs> well, he's got his, you know, he's got his camera there, keeping uh, it safe. All uh, right, the long lens of the Frenchie. <laughs> so five yeah. minutes to go here for this 
heat of the round one of the women so far. Capucine Delanois, first position. Sofia Monti, second. Simona Swatchman is in third. Simona still yet to place a second score, though. She could easily bump herself up into second with a, with a decent wave score. I mean, I think sets are far and few between we just had one set is there going to be enough time for another one to come all three athletes are pretty much in position so if a set does appear they are going to be able to ride this one down now it is just up to Cabo Verde to send a little push our way here to the island to Sal and be able to continue on I think one thing that makes a massive difference uh, to this break is the wave direction um, and, and the direction that the waves approach the islands here. So when it's coming up the channel, you get a really nice swell push through onto this reef. But if the wave direction changes even a slight amount, it can completely affect how the wave hits the reef. And I think we've seen a massive change since this morning, just in tide, in wave direction, and uh, now it looks like also in wind direction a little bit as well so it does look like it's shifted a bit there you can see it looks like maybe Kappel's in might be able to start to get a wave over here she's all the way up on the top of the point you can see with the drone how uh, that little bump is just starting to form let's see if she's going to be going on this one it does look like there's the swoop of the kite it's going to engage Kappel's in Delanoir this youngster Ooh. has improved so much on her surfing. Again, she comes from the freestyle background, took it out on the waves, and now really has become one of the most overall kiteboarders we have on the planet, hence why she was second overall last year. Well, I think it really translates, you know, and I think this um, sort of strapless freestyle direction people have been going in really does translate well into the waves because... It gives you so much control over your board, so much control over your kite, so much understanding when it comes to riding strapless, that then once you bring that to the wave game, you start to, you know, have other possibilities. You know, taking it to the air, floaters, um, you know, understanding how to keep the board on your feet in those tricky situations. So Spatial awareness, for sure. Definitely, definitely. And, you know... Uh, with the sort of heli loops and, uh, and the different ways of controlling your kite to keep the board with you through the tricks, I think really comes into play when, when you're riding a wave like this as well. No, no, absolutely. And to be, you know, having all those cards up your sleeve, you'd be able to throw out a full house any time with any conditions. But here we have Simona on the way out. She still only has one score, so she could easily bump up, as you said before, Tom. But the waves are not there. We're coming on two minutes left in this heat. As we continue on here for the women's kite surfing discipline, Kate Verde, first event of the season. It's always a pleasure to be here in Cape Verde, one way or another. It is an absolute paradise island. If you've ever been to anywhere in Cape Verde or the Canary Islands, it is um, a magic place. They've some amazing variety between the islands here and some amazing waves too. Um, not just for kite surfing, but for surfing, for all sorts of other water sports, for wing foiling, um, and just for uh, having fun in the sun. I would say that this has got to be one of Europe's, well, one of the world's top destinations at the moment. Absolutely, and you know, it's, it's very all season round here. It's great, just such a beautiful temperature. I mean, you know, let's not forget mid Feb, and it is about 20 to 25 degrees over here, which is about as bliss as it can get. Less than a minute to go, and it looks like we're going to have Sofia Monti is going to be dropping in. Let's see if she can start to get a wave here as she is out there on what looks like a 10 meter, so quite a big kite for some of these girls. But yeah, unfortunately, going down there past the reef is going to be missing out, and it looks like maybe Apple's in will have a set coming in the back. Will she seconds. be able to uh, have a closer? We will soon find out, and it does look like she's going to be able to. Oh, this is looking promising. 28 seconds to go. I mean, that's a lyric. All right, Simona here on the inside. Look at that. Bang. Nice wave. One of the best waves we've seen so far this heat. 
as you said earlier, if you're on the wave and the buzzer goes, it does count, and I believe that counts for the for, for the both riders that are on the waves right now. Yeah, so there we can see Simona get a nice wave. We're uh, going to have to wait for the, the official the results reef. to see who it is going to be. But while we do, we are going to have and check out the highlights of this last heat and see who took the win. Welcome back, everybody. Heat number three, round number one in the water. Daniela Moreno, Serena Lutz, Kessiani Rodriguez. Those are the three athletes that are going to be battling out to continue on here. First time out on the water here in Punta Preta as we are green flag a go. 20 minutes of action coming your way. Two athletes from Brazil, one from Spain. It's looking like a, a good mix in this heat. Hopefully the ocean is going to start delivering for these ladies. Yeah, we're going to see Kessiani's going to be in a white out there on the north. We're going to see Serena Luz in the blue Lycra. And then also Daniela Moreno is going to be out there on a blue F1. Daniela out of the Canaries. And then both Kessiani and Serena are coming out of Brazil. Like you said, Tom, two very talented young surfers. The Brazilians and Daniela Moreno are hanging out and coming from the Canary Islands. So none of these girls are shy to when it comes to wave riding. Let's see who is going to take the win here I mean, the as we go Islands. on. What a great place to, to be from for, for wave riding. I mean, look at this. Yeah, Cassiani Rodriguez already starting off a very powerful surfer, this young lady. Look 
coming out from the Kitely family, our partners over there in Brazil for the Copa Kitely. And I hope Delfino has his hands up in the air and ready. And here we can see Serena Lu. Serena, very powerful athlete, usually a bit better in the bigger waves and when it's a little windier. But I've seen her riding out there a couple of days ago and looking very good and very impressive. Anybody could be taking this heat. Sure, I think it's often the same with surfing as well. Like, it's very difficult to be a good surfer in small waves. Yes, very you know? difficult. It's like, to be a very good surfer in small waves is... Very hard. Like very, uh, that's well, that's uh, where you uh, really can tell the people that can surf. Here you can see Daniela just taking off on this little ripper. Gone a little bit further down, but they're, they're ju just being dropped out. And just to say hi to the people here on the stream. Essa galera brasileira. Bom dia, bom dia, bom dia. Bom dia. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys are going to be shouting very high for your Brazilian compadres here. Got Serena and Kessiani throwing down as we are round number one, heat number three. Of the women's. Exactly. So we're looking to get the round number one of the females done today so that we can be on it tomorrow for the elimination rounds when it comes to the epic conditions that look like they're coming our way. Yeah, the idea is to push on tomorrow so we can see that if we do complete it tomorrow, it will be right at the good time for the tide and the highest point of the waves. And if not, we will continue on. And then I can see a big shout out to Victor Mariano. Botaji, botaji. And also to our friends from the Copa Kaili, Rafael. And Laura, hope you guys are good. Looking forward to seeing you soon as Copa Kaili, as where we have some of our Brazilian legs of the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour over there in both Taiba, Cauipe, and Rio de Janeiro. We had in Saquarema last year with some amazing conditions, some of the biggest waves we've had at a competition. I mean, what a place, Brazil. Oh, eh? It doesn't get much better. Agua de Coco, Caipirinha, Caipirosca. I know, and just the most blast coastline for wind and waves uh, of any country. Probably. Yeah, exactly. And also I can see, ahí está Alemão. Bora, bora, bora. Brother, gracias por estar con nosotros. Obrigado por estar viendo. As we are getting ready there, it looks like we might start to have a wave. So that is going to be... Serena Luce is on the duotone. There we can see on the F1 is Daniela Moreno. And out there on the red north at the back is Kessiani Rodriguez. Moreno, 1.33. Kessiani, 3.27 for that wave. I mean, the drone shot there really, really illustrates how close these waves are to the rocks. As soon as you see that uh, drawback, you can start to realize how close these ladies are to, uh, to the reef. But that's a nice looking wave right there. Unfortunately, just came off the back, but it's definitely gonna score. So it's all about getting getting these small numbers up there so that you can get the combo. Okay, Sian so far with a 3.27. She's looking like she's in a strong position with 14 minutes to go. All she needs is one more convincing score, and she's going to be in a very good position to go through. There we go. She's dropping a 1.67 combined total of a 4.94 for two waves, and by far in the lead. And now we can see it is really starting to get chilled out there Tom now the golden hour is officially arriving you can see that orange dust is starting to go across the horizon idea is to complete this heat and one more before we close out the day and so far Kessiani far ahead almost sneezing my chest out there <laughs> That's That'd be that orange dust. Yeah, that is. It is definitely dusty is one of the words that come to mind. And we can see also just some of the guys and girls coming across the booth here. Diogo Cardoso. Drone is in the sky. Dark Raider of Portugal, we like to call him. 
making sure he gets all of the Star Wars shots. And here we go. Looks like we're going to have someone engaging. Kersiani Rodriguez. Looks like she's rocking out a helmet there as well. And on a bigger kite, I'm going to say she's on an 11. Yeah, 11 meters is a big kite for, for some of these ladies, uh, especially in the waves. It can often be difficult to get the timing right with a big kite. But that... Oh, those first two turns were really nice. Yeah, really nice she first got, two turns. Got. Just wobbled it out there on the third one. And Daniela Moreno here is on this second wave as well. Can she get in time? She oh, does. She nice does. little hit there. It's a one hit wonder. All gonna be uh, all gonna be viable scores. But again, I still think towards the bottom end of the reef could be the one. Oh no, it looks like we've got a kite down in the impact zone. I can just see uh, out the side of the window here. Maybe we're going to get a camera shot of that shortly. But hopefully she can manage to launch that before uh, it becomes too much of an issue on the reef there. Boom. Look at that replay. Yeah, it was nice. Those first two turns were really nice. And then this third one just wobble. I don't know if she hit a rock there. I think it's very uh, un unpredictable water conditions out there. Um, not only caused by the how shallow the rocks are, but also the sort of wobble of the uh, variable wind directions. Yeah, it looks like I can see out of the corner of our booth. It looks like Daniela has dropped her kite. That is definitely not what you want to do. At least she is out of, you know, where normally the impact zone is. And here we have Kersiani. That is Serena Luce here on the front. It looks like she might be taking off on a wave. Here we go. Oh, Serena Luce. Sap coming through. Look at this. Nice little first turn. Rock dodging. Nice. Little float, is she going to re-enter? No, right. too close to the rocks there, Coming unfortunately. The you can see Daniela just about to get her kite back in the air, so nice. she is up and ready to go. As we approach that halfway mark, Kessiani Rodriguez dropping in. Here we go, this could be a heat changer. Ooh, going, nope, I don't want any of that. <laughs> I don't want any of those rocks. I think you've got to be willing to lose some fins out there today. I think you need to have multiple sets of fins if you want to make your way through Punta Preta. Yeah, more uh, boards, more fins. Yeah, you, you and, got, to, uh, got to go all, all guns blazing. But yeah, these girls are not leaving anything out, especially conditions are quite challenging at the moment. As you can see, we're coming to the end of the day. So far, highest score, Ayrton Corsellino. 15 plus and an 8 plus on the highest wave score of the day as well. Standouts, definitely him, Mito, Pedro Matos, and Sebastian Ribeiro. Those are going to be the top names, and we knew it was going to be those were going to be some of the names on the women's side. We've already seen Capucine Delanois and uh, Camille Lasseran putting on some very nice surfing. Yeah, yet to come well. in the final heat, we will see the current world champion, Muna White, but so far, Kersiani Rodriguez. The kite, the athlete, is looking very strong. Serena Luce on your screen right now. I spoke to Muna last night, flown all the way from Hawaii. Long travel distance, arrived just yesterday, straight on the water today. Um, that's a tough one. Um, normally, riders would arrive a few days before just to, just to familiarize themselves with the location, get themselves on the right time zone, and, uh, you know, sort of feel a bit relaxed, but... That's the uh, the only downside of living in Hawaii, Joe, I reckon, is it's hard to leave. Oh, well, you know, it's a tough place for price to pay for paradise, but <laughs> I take that without any issue whatsoever. <laughs> you think, you know, all the times her and Kiahi, you can see them posting the stuff up, they're just, you know, now riding in endless waves, living the life, but well deserved. They're such a, such a cool couple and so talented, both of them. Kiahi de Boites needs no introduction. He has been one of the top kite surfers in the world for many years. And then Muna, queen of the waves. She has won Dakla, she's won here. She is both wing foiling and kite surfing, and at the moment, our world champion. Such a talented young athlete and, you know, a champ on and off the water. Always a smile, always a shaka. That's what we want to see. Dedicated to the shred for sure um, but yeah it's looking it's looking tough out there now it'll be interesting to see Muna what she does with the first you know her first heat she's in the last heat of the day 
wind is fluky at best, I would say. Um, girls looking like they're putting up bigger and bigger kites as we drop into the evening. Typically as the temperature cools from the day, the wind starts to get a little flukier as the temperature of the land drops. And uh, yeah, all we need is the, the waves to pick up. Yep, just a little bit of motion in the ocean to come our way at the moment. They've had a couple, maybe Kessiani's had a good set wave and then we did see there from Daniela Moreno, she had a nice one. Serena Luce with that last wave, one of her better scores as we are now seven and a half minutes to go out of the 20. Top two ones are the ones that score 10 wave attempts each as we are round number one of the women here. GK Kites of Wild Cup Cape Verde as the final two heats to hit the water as this is heat number three and we will be closing off the day with heat number four of the women which is going to be in between Julia Borgi, Sonia Bunta and Muna White. I'm just reviewing the forecast here though, Joe, just to, uh, just to confirm um, a few things for tomorrow. And uh, yeah, obviously if you look at, the, look at the general wind guru forecast, you can, you can see for Saturday there's a, a big new period coming in. But if you scroll down to the slightly more detailed forecast, you can see that tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. there is a fresh swell hitting at 22 seconds. And yeah. It's a secondary swell, but 22 seconds is a very, very deep, uh, deep, long distance ground swell. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you're on these remote islands, they like, can pick up. They can really, really pick up and come out of nowhere. So I'm, I'm thinking by tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. when we're when we're looking to start the event, we're going to definitely start seeing a little rise in what's going on. I mean, it's not going to start massive. But then, then it's it's building and building and building to to 1.8, 15 seconds. Yeah, I mean we're already starting to see some other waves, and with those tides pushing, because let's not forget, it would be we will be seeing high tide is going to be around 11, 12, one, one o'clock. Is yeah, one right. around one o'clock is when we're going to be seeing that high tide tomorrow. So the morning will have the push, and then that secondary is about now. So yeah, I reckon that mid morning is when we're going to see some of the bigger sets rolling through. Let's see if the wind is there. Full day of action. We have about eight hours to go on if we are to finish the competition. So that is definitely possible, as we are looking for a first possible start. 9:30, 10 ish is the idea. It's not official yet, though. You make sure to tune into a social media channel to find that out. But yeah, looking like a very promising day for tomorrow. Definitely, 17 to 23 knots with an average building swell up to two meters, 15 seconds. It's going to be interesting to see how that works with the tide, but I'm pretty confident that it's going to be delivering some very, very good action for both men's and women's. And with, with, with a bit of luck, we're going to get the kite surfing side of things done and dusted. That is what we want to see. And then we would get some good action, especially in those good swells, because when you have the top athletes and the conditions are there as well, that is when you really start to see why the kite surfing, why surfing with a kite is so much fun. And what these guys and girls can do on those waves is just nothing nothing less than mind-boggling. I mean, it's, yeah, indeed. It is a special thing when you see the best of the best in really good conditions to, for kite surfing. I mean, just to put a comparison on it, you wouldn't surf out there right now. No. Nope. But you can kite surf out there right now. Exactly. And it's not that bad. No. You know what I mean? It's still, there's action going on, there's turns being put down, these girls are making the best out of the conditions, but you wouldn't surf it. No. So it's, you know, the, the options are there, and uh, it's, uh, it's going to be 
inspirational, I think, to see it when it really starts to get punchy and big, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, that's why why we come to Cape Verde is to see those one-of-a-kind conditions. I mean, you know, this location has been back from the windsurfing days. You know, the likes of Josh Angulo and the Robbie Nashes and the Bjorn Donkowex coming down here and Jason Pollockers, where you have those photos of them just airing across that first section where it was, you know, double to triple overhead. And we've seen that with the kiting and with the forecast that is coming, we could be seeing that again. And, you know, to be able to kind of, you know, put the nail in the coffin and get that kind of a forecast in a waiting period of contest, you know, hopefully it will be true. Yes, and that's without even mentioning the wing foiling. Yep. I'm fully expecting people to be flying down the, down the line. Do you know what I mean? Like they, hovering. They, they will be definitely hovering. It's going to be <laughs> hovercrafts and back to the future all across the water here. <laughs> you never know. I mean, with wing foiling, we've seen it in the last few years go from something that seemed like it was essentially impossible to uh, a complete new art form. Yeah, it's incredible to see how far wing foiling has come, and especially one of the things I love about wing foiling is that there are so many young kids getting involved, and that just says something about a sport, because if the kids are involved, means the parents are going to get involved, it means both of them are going to get involved, and that's just going to take the sport further and further along, which is great to see, because in the end, it's, you know, any excuse to get out the water with family, with friends, and just have a good time and have some vibes, it doesn't get much better and yeah here we can see Daniela Moreno on your screen now further down the line trying to get on some of those insiders but look how close it's in between Serena and Cassiani 6.84 one and a half minutes left looks like a little set inbound managed to squeeze a couple of nice turns out of that all right Daniela needing nice some pull if she wants to be able to get some of the scores She's not quite getting the power, but three good turns from her. This is definitely going to improve on her overall that score. beach section. Definitely, uh, definitely the end of the line down there is it's delivering. All right, and there it is. Final minute, last 60 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, as all of the athletes are actually out of position. So it was going to be interesting to see if they're going to be able to get back in. But there it is. Look at that image. As you can see, the sunset just vibing in the background, nice and gold all the way. And there we can see Cassiani Rodriguez just running through the sunset. And 20 seconds coming up on to the final moments of this heat. There is not looking like there's any waves. A little bit of a bump there. Let's see if someone gets on it because if not, it, the stand is are going to be the same. Very close in between Cassiani and Serena, but now Cassiani just dropping another score, 5.60. So Cassiani Rodriguez is going to take the win, and let's have a look at the highlights of that last heat.
And welcome back, everybody. So final heat of the day, Julia Borgi, the young local the youngster of Joa and Giada, Sonia Bunte and Muna White going out on the water. Muna White, your current world champion and last year's competition winner. Hold on to your hats. Final heat, day number one. What a banger it has been already. What a banger. Yes, look at this light we've got out there. Sun going down. Golden light. Perfect setup here on Punta Preta. Some of the best women wave riders in the world Muna White world current world champion or defending world champion what can she do in these challenging conditions it will be interesting to see I mean the conditions are hard let's not uh, let's not tell it other than it is they're difficult out there yeah well, it is definitely challenging I mean there you can see Muna on the the F1 black and orange, your current world champion, Juliet Borgi. She is out there on your screen right now with the bright yellow ball, the F1, and then Sonia Bunter on the core. All right, so Julia, look, I mean, just look at the color, the vibes. It's just the orange is starting to come down. All right, so Moon and Lut White dropping couple, in for the first time. A couple of sets rolling through, actually, right now. It's looking, looking encouraging. Straight down the line. Bang. Hails from Hawaii. See plenty of videos of Moon ripping some of the local breaks out there. She's definitely got the skills. She certainly does. One of the top water women. And there we can see also Julia Borgi. There we can see Julia Borgi also making her way down. One of the local wonder kids. Let's see how she does. There's the view. Those are the colors we want to see. As she's just straight lining this at the moment. We're going to be engaging on a couple of turns very shortly. Seen her practicing actually over the last few days. Um, she seems like she's been doing pretty well out there, handling the conditions. Obviously, they've been a lot bigger than they are today, or at least right now. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great advantage to have this as your local spot. Yeah, I mean, this is what I call a proving grounds. Yeah, definitely. Ah, there we got we got the reggae music in the back. The sunset is happening. Yeah, definitely. Shalom, shalom, as we are continuing to enjoy this beautiful first event of the season here for the GK Kitesurf World Cup. Kate Verde, Punta Preta, your current world champion of the women's discipline in the water, Muna White out there. She is going to be on the black and orange F1, so the kite in the middle. On the right-hand side with the orange, that is Julia Bourgeois. On the left-hand side with the white core is Sonia Bunter, your final three athletes here for today. Looks like there's a little motion out there. There's a few waves coming through. Short period, but let's see how it hits the reef. Looks like Moon is in position for what looks like the best wave of the set, but it's, diff it's always difficult to tell. Oh, we got there, we can see. It looks like we've got a little bit of a Star Wars coming here, as we can see. Moon and White dropping in, here we go. Ah, off the top, this is what we're talking about, Moon. Open shoulder turn and whoa! Saw the yeah, open close reef. to those rocks. You can see the open reef, and if you think it's just rocks, by looking at it, it's not just rocks. If you touch those, if you touch that reef, it's all manner of things from rocks, urchins, fire coral. Um, there's all sorts of things that you don't want to really come into contact with out there on the on the bottom of the sea floor. Yeah, go good turn there from Julian. You can hear the crowd here starting to go wild as the local is throwing down. And there's a nice view. Boom! Nice turn off the top there for Julia. Good ride in there for the youngster. Well, I said I've said it before. I said it again that end section of the wave. Yep. Yep. You I agree. I completely agree. Definitely delivering. And it's a hard choice to choose the end section of the wave because you've got. You know, normally you're just all about staying upwind mm. to be in position, mm. but right now I think it, it's paying off to be downwind. 
Yeah, no, that down that bottom section does really look like it's working it here for this young athlete. Julia Borgi from Halen out of Cape Verde. And I tell you what, the sunset and the vibe is just awesome down here. And enjoying here Punta Preta, the final moment. So let's have a little look. See, 6.70 for Muna. Julia Borgi has a 2.5. Five, seven. So in first position, Muna White. Second position, Julia Borgi. All right, so there. Muna White in first position. Second position, Julia Borgi. Third position, Sonia Bunter. As we are now coming up on 14 minutes to go. Look at this, there's a few lines coming through, looking encouraging, but the wind is light. But once you're on one of these waves, that's all it takes. Here we go, Moon are dropping into probably the biggest wave we've seen. Very nice top turn on our first one, linking it through into the second, but not getting a re-entry. Difficult with that wind, but that first turn, very nice first turn. Yeah, nice little one-hit wonder. She's got such a good surfing style, this young athlete. And there you go. She's going to be racking up another score here. Top two scores count. Ten waves each. And what a first day. And I've just been told by a tour manager, it does look like the idea is to go for the completion of the final tomorrow. So it does look like we might be having, if conditions are there and all goes according to plan, we are going to be having the finals here of the GK Kitesurf World Cup of Cape Verde tomorrow as long as those conditions stay with us and it unofficially first possible start is going to be at 9 o'clock. Local time. Yep, local time. So that's 11 o'clock Central European time. 10 o'clock back in the UK. Perfect if you're looking to do nothing but watch kite surfing all day. Little coffee with a screen open, you know, toggle left, toggle right when the boss cars comes across behind you. Ideal, exactly. And you can join us here in the booth, in the sauna, right on the beach for some live action. It's going to be good. I've got a feeling tomorrow is going to be a banger. It is looking like it's going to be epic to say the least or you know epic sexy amazing passionate is what we've been hearing about Cape Verde and I reckon we are going to be seeing some of the best conditions talking to Joe and talking to me too you know these guys know this place like the back of their hand and they said we're excited this is a swell that we don't see here often and hopefully that it's going to come off because if it does it could be something to be remembered about yeah fingers crossed It'll be a nice way to kick off the 2024 GKA season as well. You know, kite surfing is definitely an underrepresented area of the sport, I would say. And it's something that I'm very passionate about and I love to do on a kite is ride waves. And I think it's definitely something that we need to showcase more of, you know. And um, there's nothing better to showcase it than having an epic forecast come through for the first stop of the season. Yeah, I mean, kind of to start the season off with a bang and that's why we came to Cape Verde that's why you know once again a big thank you to all of our sponsors to to do a turn in F1 for especially making this Cape Verde event happen together with Qatar Airways and the GK Kite Surf World Tour and now it is so cool to see these kind of conditions coming towards us because it's where we can really portray what this discipline can do in the sport and now Muna already starting to rack up some big numbers. Yeah, she's got an early domination here. And there it is. So, Muna White in first position. Second position, Julia Borgi. Third position, Sonia Bunta. And luckily, it looks like we are still connected to the cable. Thank you. And here we Ten go. Minutes Ten minutes to go. to go. 
All right, there's a bump coming towards Muna. Let's see if that is going to turn into a set wave. Sun has disappeared behind the clouds, and it is starting to get dark, mate. It is indeed. It happens quickly here. It does. Sun has dropped below the horizon. It is exactly 6.30 p.m. local time. So there we go. We have it. It's now officially beer o'clock. Wherever you are in the world. Any excuse is a good excuse. <laughs> and Julia here, like now, you can definitely see they are struggling on the wave situation. Just coming up on nine minutes. Let's see if another set is going to be coming their way. They're just going to be chilling out patiently. Muna White is in position. She's all the way up the top waiting. And here we can see Julia here on the inside. Boom! Ah, oh, just getting pulled off the back there, unfortunately. And we can hear it. Every time she goes for a wave, you can hear the local speaker just going a few notches up on the volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of local support on the beach. It's a good thing, man. I mean, kite surfing here is so good for the locals. Everybody, everybody's into it. It's all, um, it's all good. All right, so, so far, Muna White, 8.83, Julia Borgi, uh, 4.86, Sonia Brunter just on a 0 0.50, not able to jump in on a wave so far. Coming up on eight minutes left to go as we are continuing on the final heat of day number one. Complete day of action, starting off bright and early and rolling all the way through. And what a way to kick off the 2024 Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. Alright, so just reviewing Muna's wave there, so 8.83, and now continuing on, as we, looks like we might have a little bit of a set coming in on the backside, but yeah, athletes have had a very hard time of getting on some of the ways, conditions are looking a lot better for tomorrow, but as we are now officially going to be closing it off with this heat for that day number one here of the Cape Verdean World Cup. Yeah, and what a great day to start with, Joe. That was a full day of action, wasn't it? Got it certainly was. All the from the from the dusk and from dawn until dusk, from mate. Dawn until dusk. That's what we like here on the GKA World Tour. Non-stop action from sunrise to sunset. Started with a cuppa and going to end off with a pint. It doesn't get much better than that. Hello, Gemma. That's what we're looking for on the GKA. Non-stop action. So, yeah, just now coming up on that six-minute mark, and they are all the way back. So they're in position, maybe enough time to be able to get one more set and get another little schmackaroo down the line to close it out. But as you can see, we we're just chilling out here on the beach. One of the things that gets me about Cape Verde, the temperature. It is just nice and warm all day long. One thing is we are definitely going to go ham with either a sunburn or a tan, mate. Sunburn for me, I think it's going to be. I, I think I've already gone through three days of intense British tanning. <laughs> the old, the, yeah, medium rare to yeah. well done. Every time I put on my backpack, my neck hurts <laughs> already. <laughs> That's definitely the sign of the old of the old tan coming in. But yep, so now just waiting to see if that end set comes as there is not a lot of action out there on the water I at mean, all. It is bleak. It's. I think it's hard to even stay out wind right now. But that is not a sign of things to come because after a detailed analysis of the forecast, we are looking for some very exciting action tomorrow and I'm personally very excited to be watching it. Mm. We couldn't be in a better place for it. 
I mean, we've got front row seats. We just need a, a little bit of popcorn, and it is happening. All right, dropping in. Muna White once again in the right place, in the right position. This is where you can really tell. But looking like she's going against that, not quite happy with what she's seen. Is she going to be going for the one behind? I reckon she is. Yeah, engaging. Here we go. Another wave. No. Nope. Muna not being able to get on that set. I just, I think the, the pressure is not there. It's looking very light, the win now. It certainly is looking light, that is for sure, as we are coming to the closing moments of the first day of competition over here in Punta Preta. And to be honest, she doesn't really need a higher score at the moment. With a 5.4 and a 3.43, she's sitting quite pretty with an 8.83 combined total. Comfortably in the lead to take her through into the third round. Um, letting the other girls fight it out tomorrow in the elimination round. Yeah, just having an hour. She can kind of watch it from the sidelines. I mean, you know, she's won this contest last year and she was absolutely ripping. Muna really does know, you know, these kind of conditions. Coming from Hawaii, she, you know, rides similar places to this and it shows she doesn't have the fear and she really just commits and engages. So, yeah, coming, coming to the end of this heat so far. But Julia Borgi, the local... Uh, it's already a 4.86. Let's see if she can get another set because she is out there and in position as well. And you know what they say, it ain't over until the buzzer. All right, Muna, here we go. Here we go. Can she stay out of the day? The lid is really light out there it's right now. It's a light wind, but there's a little little movement coming in. There's definitely is a wave. Can Julia Borgia get into this? She could do with backing up that 3.43. She could do some damage, but it's hard. She's drifting down the point. One thing that does concern me is I can see Sonia Bunter all the way out the back on the left-hand side. I'm not sure if she's going to be able to make it back. They're going to have to double-check and make sure she is okay. There you can see it on the screen. Julie Borgi now turning around as we come to the final two minutes out there. Look at that sky, Tom. It's gorgeous. Yeah, the whole place here is, uh, is so beautiful. What an amazing island. What an amazing sea colour, what amazing sunset every evening, and uh, just the perfect temperature, like you say. Board shorts, t-shirts, and uh, morning swims. Absolutely, and bikinis all the way. That's uh, what we want to see down here at the competition. And now, just coming on there, you can see our judges no, the, no. closing out the day. Juan Antonio there, our race director, holding on, making sure that tower doesn't fall down. <laughs> 90 seconds, two years left, Alvaro Nieva and Paolo and Paulino Pereira, both the GWA head judge and the GKA kitesurf head judge. And we are definitely coming to the final moments. It looks like Sonia has made it back, so that's cool. And we're now just waiting to see if another set will be able to arrive for these two athletes out the water. There's as we are coming to the final 60 seconds. There is a set on the horizon. It does look like there's something out there, and it looks like Julia is trying to get on it. She can keep pressure. She has... She's on a wave. This could be good. I mean, she's comfortably in second place anyway, so... She can only hope to improve her 1.43 score, currently sitting in second. But there is a chance that she could advance. Let's have a look. The wave is opening up and the one behind it for Muna as well. So we are going to have some final surfing just to close it out. Or they are going to use these waves just to push them in to the area, which I reckon they might do because they know 
as it's light that is going to be able to push them down so it's going to be that lady there boom nice moon turn. white is going to be taking the win of that heat congratulations to her so that is it for the competition today let's go and have a look at the highlights of that last heat everybody well thank you very much for joining us here for the first day of competition here of the gk kite surf world cup in cape verde i'm josie asher saying a good evening and tom thank you very much for joining me here in the booth it's been an absolute pleasure guys it's been great to be here on the island of cape verde in sal watching the kite surfing world cup for the gka start of the 2024 season and uh, we look forward to being here again with you tomorrow for some epic action so make sure you stay tuned yeah nine o'clock is the first possible start for the competition tomorrow make sure to tune into all of the social media channels as we will be keeping you update thank you very much muchas gracias obrigado bon noche we will see you tomorrow prost Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. The body. Just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions will be crowned, legends will be made. This is gonna be epic. come true and let's go for the next one <laughs> 